welcome to Columbia County. Tonight, two of its biggest rivals collide with more than bragging rights on the line. We're always excited to be able to showcase our kids and their talents in our school. Big atmosphere, you know, it's gonna be on TV, but you know, just try to keep the kids even kills we can. Greenbrier and Evans, both on the outside looking in at the playoffs. Tonight's winner controls its own destiny. We told our kids, you know, you win these last three, you're in the playoffs. So you got, you know, it's a winner go home for pretty much both teams at this point. As of right now, I mean, we, we, we control our fate. You know, we, we do our job the next three games we, we're in. The playoff picture comes into focus on game night live. Welcome to Game Night Live. WJBF Sports presents local high school football live in your living room each Friday night. Game Night Live is powered by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And now, your hosts, John Hart and Ashley Brown. John Pierce Blanchard Stadium, site of the biggest game in town tonight, Game Night Live between Greenbrier and Evans in 1996. Greenbrier High School was birthed in large part from Evans High School. These two programs have been doing battle ever since, but rarely with as much at stake as there is tonight. John Hart joined once again by Ashley Brown. Nobody knows more about sports in Columbia County than you do. And, and we spent a solid 15 minutes before we went on the air examining all the different scenarios between <laughs> yeah. these two teams. If one, if Evans wins, if Greenbrier wins, what happens? The bottom line here is, this is like a playoff game in the yeah, regular season. Both teams need to win to control their destiny. Yeah, they both control their own destiny. If they both win their final three games, they're definitely in. Uh, and Evans' loss tonight puts them out. So it definitely uh, a n make or break for them. Greenbrier technically could still get in with the loss, but man, it makes the road tough. So really tonight, both of these teams are literally fighting for their playoff lives. So we will dive deeper into the standings and what this means for both teams. But like you said, bottom line, just uh, both teams need to win tonight yep. to keep their playoff hopes. Well, Evans definitely needs to win to keep its playoff hopes sure. alive. Greenbrier uh, could still get in even if they lose here tonight. But I'm sure Sean Tiernan, the first-year head coach <laughs> of Greenbrier, would just assume uh, avoid all of that. So uh, with that, we'll take you down to the field. The captains are moving toward – the middle of the field and the Evans logo, and we get ready for the coin toss. Come on in, guys. We're shaking hands. Anybody got any questions? If after four quarters we're tied, we'll do all this over again. Okay? So be looking for us. Who's going to call my coin? 58. Okay, because you two schools have such good baseball programs and the World Series starts tonight, this is my baseball coin. Okay? GHSA is ahead. The baseball is a tail. That's a tail. GHSA is ahead. What do you call it? Tails. Tails, it's going to hit the ground. It's ahead. You get to choose now. We want the ball. You want the ball. Which goal do y'all want? Which goal? We want to go that way. You want to defend the scoreboard? Yes, sir. Turn your back to your scoreboard. You guys turn your back on this side. You're good. Oh, wow, oh, man. God knows. Y'all ain't got to go that far. Mark up. Evans won the toss, and they'll get it over here. All right, here we go. Let's have a good night. A themed and highly entertaining coin toss from our referee, Mark Attaway, tonight. And he saw number 75, the big man for Evans, the Georgia commit Mason Short. We'll talk more about him. But first, A.B.'s keys to the game. Well, let's start with the visitors from Greenbrier. Quick start. Evans is really struggling of late. Don't give them any hope. And also protect the football. If you don't turn it over, the way their offense can grind it out, they could make things difficult for Evans. And then for the Knights, pack the line of scrimmage and force Greenbrier to throw the football make Stevens uncomfortable back there. And then also long drives, keep the football, keep their defense off the field. Uh, that is a recipe for success tonight for Evans. And there come the Evans Knights, three and four overall, one and four in region 5A. And the Greenbrier Wolfpack, three and four overall, two and three in one 5A. The Knights get the ball first, kickoff is next.
23rd meeting between these two arch rivals. Evans leads the all-time series 15-7, but the, the, the number that stands out, A.B., the Knights have won the last 10 in this series. Yeah, that did. It jumped out to me, too, when I was doing some game notes. And uh, 10 straight, so you know Greenbrier wants to get it done. They've had a – man, what an improved year they've had. The fans are excited. The fact that they are in the playoff mix this late in the season hasn't happened in a few years. Uh, so we should have a good one tonight. And Evans is just trying to get back on track. They got off to a great start this year. They beat Thompson. They were looking pretty good after a couple of wins early. And, boy, since then they have really struggled. And Greenbrier, this is a Greenbrier program that was 5-25 and 25 over the last three seasons before Sean Tiernan took over this year. Just one win from 2021 to 2024. I was going to say look out here because Evans is known to run these things back. They've done it a couple of times this year, but it'll be a touchback. Yeah, we might see a lot of those tonight because Evans does, when they kick, feature one of the premier kickers in the area. And uh, Tyler Wallace, who is going to be playing at North Alabama next year. So we'll see the Evans offense first. And, again, they came out of the gates hot. They've struggled a little bit of late. And we mentioned this is the second straight week on Game Night Live. We've seen somebody yeah. win the toss. And want the football. And yeah, it's just a, usually the trend is to put your deep, you know, have the ball for the second half. But Westside did this last week. It did not pay off for them. We'll see how it works for Evans. So here comes the Knights team averaging 20 points a game. Problem is they've been giving up 22 a game. Yeah. And at quarterback for the Knights tonight. Jackson Swint. Jackson Swint. And due to injury, he gets the call tonight. And on first down. Nice gain of about five. Yeah, Jeremy Howard, their leading rusher this year. They would love to be able to run the football. Both these teams tonight, a real key is who's going to be able to run it. And there's the big fellow, Mason Short. They would like to run behind him. He is going to be headed off to Georgia. He's actually going to graduate early. He'll be finished with school in high school in December and start early in Athens And uh, Would have been an easy pick for our Border Bowl squad, but he'll already be. Yep. Learning the ropes from Kirby Smart at that point. Yeah. A little trick play from Evans. Well, this is a Dorian. Ch nope, not Dorian Chance. That's Buddy Rogerere. One of the best names in high school football in the CSRA I, and one of the better players as well. I started getting messages about him when he was in sixth grade because of his track exploits, and I just thought the same thing. Buddy Rowe, what a <laughs> name. He is going to be playing football next year at Kent State. He played his first three years of high school at Aquinas. He's a big-time athlete. Maybe even better on defense than offense at uh, defensive back. Third and three for the Knights on the opening drive. Yeah, kind of a big play confidence-wise for the Evans offense, and I don't I think they're going to get it. Nope. Yeah. Greenbrier's defense ready there and gets the stop. Well, that was Howard, and I don't think he got back to the line of scrimmage. So for the second straight week, we have a team elect to take the football first. And come up empty. Yeah, three and out. Well, we did Greenbrier the opening game of the season, and they gave Harlem Fitz losing in overtime. And in that game, one of the key players in the first half that helped Greenbrier build a lead, unfortunately they, for Greenbrier fans, they lost it in the second half, was Ryan Claiborne. And he had to leave the game at halftime. Didn't play the second half. He is a big factor for this team. And I'm assuming let's it see is if I can Ryan get a number. Claiborne. He's back deep. Yes, it is Claiborne. And he'll take it at his 20-yard line. Yeah, he's very dangerous, and Barrett Davis is well aware of that. And you see the speed. And gives Greenbrier a great field position at the 47-yard line. What a luxury it is to have him back there and know that on any given play, first he can take it to the house, but he's also going to set you up usually in good field position. And it was a great punt. Tyler Wallace, in addition to his kicking, is a very good punter. And he sent Claiborne back deep, but Claiborne with a nice return. He has a 53-yard punt. Yeah, Tyler Wallace, one of the best legs. He can, you know, like I said, he's a great place kicker. They call him touchback Tyler. Uh, but he um, he's a good, he's really become one of the better punters in the area as well. Greenbrier offense led by Braden Stevens, the junior quarterback. And they have averaged 25 points a game this year. Yeah, much improved from a year ago. He started last year as a sophomore. And you would expect it from a 10th grade to 11th grade year improvement, and he has definitely done that. But a flag on first down. It's going to be a false start on Greenbrier. On the offense, down remains first. Here 
the Greenbrier under first year head coach Sean Tiernan. He's three and four in his first year in charge of the pack. A Greenbrier grad, both he and his wife. Yep. Greenbrier grad. So Wolfpack blood runs thick through both of them. And he said this was the perfect fit for a job as he came in. But he came, he was a former Thompson offensive coordinator where they averaged 34 points a game and, of course, won the 2022 na national championship. They might have yeah. with that team. Uh, <laughs> state championship uh, under his tutelage. He also was at Burke County for uh, several years, helped them win the 2011 state championship, coached at Lakeside with Barrett Douglas, by he, the way. He was at Burke County and Lakeside with Barrett. With, with Barrett both, Davis, yep. yep. Uh, and, uh, and of course, Barrett Davis, speaking of him, 41 and 32 in his seventh season overall, 20 and 21 here at Evans in his fourth season, uh, formerly the head coach at Southeast Bullock, where he led them to the region championship in 2020. He's a Harlem grad, and we talked about having to win tonight to keep playoff hopes alive. Barrett Davis has never missed the playoffs. That's right, six straight coach. years as a head coach, he's been in the postseason. And uh, his team, he's hoping, will fight for him tonight to get it back in there. Uh, tough sledding after the great field position. The flag backs him up and a couple of short runs. Well, the interesting thing for Greenbrier is they really have to manage the time they have number 22, Cole Trupp, on the field. He's their best runner, but he's also their best defensive player, so they don't use him all the time on offense. So uh, he's not in there on this series. And like I said, he is their best player, make no bones about it. So they're much better when he's out there. So far, the pack have gone in reverse. And Stevens, Stevens is going to throw it. Wide yep. open. Yep. And that's going to be a first. And a lot of running room inside Evans territory. And it might be six. Touchdown. And the aforementioned Ryan Claiborne. 54 yards for Claiborne. And, man, you, what a great play design because Claiborne was by himself. I, again, there are two or three players on this Greenbrier team you've got to focus on. One of them is Claiborne. You can't let him get open, much less that wide open. Complete blown coverage. Yeah, that was blown every I – mean, he just was out there by himself completely. Not sure what happened, but a good play call by Greenbrier at a perfect time, and they strike first with an easy touchdown. Second touchdown grab of the year, and now LaVon Simon in for the point after. I didn't want to jinx him, but he is now 21 of 22 on PATs, and – the pack strike first, 7 0. 802 left in the first. <laughs> 7 0 Greenbrier after the 54 yard strike from Stevens to Ryan Claiborne. Yeah, I said one of the keys to the game for Evans was to force Greenbrier to throw the football. Maybe they I need to I need to think that over because that one looked pretty easy on third down. They find Claiborne in the flat, wide open, and he takes it to the house. Well, look, we talked about Greenbrier and their resurgence this year, three and four overall. Two of those losses are by one score. Yeah. So this could easily be a five and two. No team. doubt, Greenbrier. Three of their losses, three of their four losses, are teams who have a combined record of 19 and three. And then the other team they lost to is Effingham County, who's one of the hottest teams in the state yeah. in the last few weeks. Yeah, that, they, that performance against Brunswick was amazing. Yeah, they, they, they held Brunswick to the lowest yeah. point total of the year. 21-14 final. Nobody has been able to hold Brunswick down like that. And then they played Lakeside tough. Lakeside scored late to make it 28-14, but they played them tough. This is a very much improved Greenbrier team. Yeah, this is a very important drive for Evans, and it will begin. Good run. At the 33-yard line. Yeah, great run by Howard. Jeremy Howard just yeah. kept the pile moving. Yeah, he's emerged as one of the leaders of this night's offense and uh, great play there on the return uh, for the year. He leads them in rushing with 463 yards on the ground on, on just 54 carries, too. I mean, he's averaging over eight yards a carry. So our second look at this Evans offense. Yeah, early in the year it was E.J. Hogan at quarterback. Tonight the starter is uh, is uh, Jackson Swint, number 12. And we have now, a they could have got a different, different quarterback. quarterback. Yeah, that's yeah. why I was trying to figure out. And it is sort of the wild night formation, the direct snap. Good for that is Hogan five. Back and yeah, you mentioned Hogan yeah. started the year as the starter, and he gets the carry here. You know, he had a couple of really good games to start the year. Very efficient. Didn't have to throw it a lot. They were mostly running, and they won two ball games. 
but hasn't done a whole lot statistically since. And he's had any and, and not sure if there was an injury. I have to check and see if he's missed some games, but it looks like they're splitting some time tonight between him and Swint. Swint back in on second down, but first catch the call. And here's Mark Attaway. That's an illegal substitution on the offense. Down remains second. So second and 13. And yeah, Hogan has not missed any. He's played in every game as Swint completes a pass. Yeah, it's Guerrero again. Yeah, they, that, he's the guy you want to get the ball to in the open field because he can absolutely fly. He is the favorite target. That is yeah. his team leading 14th reception of the year. And he had a 70-yard touchdown in the opener against uh, Thompson. That win turned a lot of heads. And, but we've now learned Thompson not as strong, although they're playing well now. Uh, but still, that was a big win in week one. A lot of people were surprised by that one. Third and eight. Went under pressure, and he'll have to take it himself. And he's going to be about two yards shy. Oh, he's going to throw that ball with the yeah. check down. I think the running back had a chance to pick that up if he had. And I think maybe. There and early. I thought maybe he had a chance running it even to get it. That was not. I don't think he realized where he was on the on the field. He was pretty close. So two possessions, two three and outs for the Knights, and Tyler Wallace back in again. Booming punt on his first attempt. Yeah, over 53 50 yards. yards. Yep. This one more to line drive. And again, Claiborne. And this time the Knights wrap him up. Yeah, at nice the 20. Nice job corralling him there by the Flag Knights. Flag in late. And number four and number eight for Evans in on that tackle. That's Tariko Harper. He's a college commitment as well, going to Tennessee State, number eight. And then Bryce Jones, number uh, Johns, number four. I think there's one guy for Evans, and he's been he's missed some time this year. But one of the most underrated players in the area as far as when I went and saw him, I was really impressed, and I don't hear people talk about him. I'm it's interested to see in how he back. plays tonight. On the return team, first down. Yeah, block in the back. Number 63, Jack Harrington, one of the defensive linemen for Evans. He is uh, he was a terror in the backfield last year when we did the Evans game. And like I said, he's missed some time this year, but a really, really talented player. Rattle back to Evans, excuse me, Greenbrier, all the way back to its 15-yard line. And here comes Cole Trupp, Greenbrier's top uh, rusher this year. And, again, he does it really playing about half the time on offense. 73 carries, 446 yards, but the big number, 11 rushing touchdowns. He also has 75 tackles and four tackles for loss as a defender on the other side of the ball. Yeah, averages six a carry. Well, he is – Really tough customer, outstanding. His, his older brother, A.J., was a good baseball player here at Greenbrier that signed with Georgia Southern. And Cole is a definite uh, potential college player on the football side of things for sure. Under well, we're making up for all those uh, games we had that didn't have a lot of flags earlier in the season. <laughs> we have had a decent run uh, of late. <laughs> First and 15 from the 10. Another, another false oh, another one. See, yeah. That one's on you, A.B. Right that tackle. is my fault. I'll, I'll take that one. Right tackle. Let's see if he didn't mention It's a false name. start on the <laughs> offense. Half a distance to the goal. Down remains first. Yeah, Packers are running out of room. Yeah, it's still first down, but wow. Uh, luckily for them, they're against the goal. They can't go any further back, really. It's so tough to run your offense, though, backed up against your own end zone like this. A lot of the great quarterbacks love the throw from down yeah. here, though. Well, Sam Darnold didn't like it in the fourth quarter last night, that well. face mask that <laughs> kind of ended the game. One well, of the worst blown face calls. Mask, yeah. yeah, one of the worst. I, I, I'll see it worked out for me. That's all I'll say. Yeah, yeah me too. Me too. <laughs> I was rooting for the call. 
uh, just trying to get a little breathing room is and, Steve, uh, that's Trupp, actually. And in all fairness, I mean, they still had to go down the length of the field and score and get a two-point It was conversion. unlikely. But they never, didn't have a chance because of the missed call and, the, and just the optics of the referee being right there mm -hmm. watching the call. That was last night in Thursday Night Football, folks, the Rams. And a lot of folks here were happy because Matthew Stafford had four touchdown passes for the Georgia product. They didn't meet for ten minutes and then change the goal? Well, you know, yeah. it, but that brings up another Nobody good point. Nobody do anything on the field. It, so. it, <laughs> <laughs> that brings up another good point of it, why is that not reviewable? If you're, yeah. you're going to use yeah. replay to get things right, get you it think right. that would be one of the main things you can review. And, and, and on second and 15, I think uh, Sean Tiernan has seen enough of this backwards trend and wants to talk to his – his packs are timeout Greenbrier with 525 left in the first. You know, one thing both of these coaches told us this week is these, let's see, Evans played, what, three games in nine, nine days, days after yep. the hurricane. Uh, Greenbrier played three games in ten days. And so for both, this has been sort of the first normal week yep. to sort of get their legs back under them. And, and, and sort of get back to some sense of normalcy. Well, and you could th you could say All right, it's tough to play that many games because you get beat up and bruised. Yes, mental 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 fatigue, no doubt about it. That's true as well. But also that routine, yes. But the big thing too is coaches being able to put stuff in. You know, it, you just don't have the time you have when you have a full week. Yeah, and uh, not to mention that some of those trips were long trips down yeah. to South Georgia in the middle of the week. That uh, that. Uh, are tough, especially when you're on a school bus with a bunch of teenagers, and not yeah. getting back till two or three in the morning. Yeah, some of these teams are going to get a get a little bit of help. All Hope right, bye. Well, folks, McDonald's, if you didn't know, offers flexible hours, above average pay, and other great benefits. It's America's best first job. As one of eight Americans has worked at McDonald's, even Donald Trump. Uh, <laughs> learn more about potential <laughs> opportunities at your local restaurant. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Yeah, both candidates for president. Yeah, now, that's right. You know, they say one in eight Americans have worked at McDonald's and now both presidential candidates. What are the odds? Mm -hmm. Crazy, I, right? That one in eight number is, is one of the craziest stats it I've is. ever heard. Second and 15. And Stevens. Stevens. Is that Trump? I think that was Trump, actually. Yeah, Cole Trump on the direct snap. Showing his... Escapability up to the 22-yard line, and that'll be a first down, a Hawk Law Group first down for the Wolfpack, their first of the night, or first on this drive, I should say, and they're now back out of the shadow of their own goalpost. And to be fair, I haven't eaten McDonald's, but I've been in there enough to eat. I haven't worked at McDonald's, but I've been in there enough to eat. I'm like an employee. <laughs> you should own stock. 40 hours a week, right? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> uh, nothing doing on first down. Miscommunication with the running back. Yeah. Well, one thing Sean Tiernan, you know, both these guys spent a lot of time as assistants at good programs. You know, Lakeside, Burke County, and then Sean Tiernan, the offensive coordinator at Thompson, and all those all the success they've had. He is known as an offensive uh, guru, and so far he's done a great job at Greenbrier for sure. Look at all those receivers Four to the left receivers. side of your screen for Greenbrier. Evans showing blitz here. Usually means a lot of times they're going yeah. to the isolated guy. Just so they can give Stevens time because, again, now the receivers are asking for the play to be repeated. That's never good. Stevens Got looking for one of them. Oh, and just a little bit behind Claiborne, or he was gone again. Wow, that was – he was the inside receiver, and they had him – wide open there, but the ball, like you said, thrown a little behind him. So third and 11 for Greenbrier. Already up seven to nothing. We get a little bit late here in quarter number one. Same formation. There's no safety help. Yeah. So if one of these receivers beats their man like they did last time, the center of the field is wide open. And good call, Nathan. You yeah. said it before the last play. This time they went with Aiden Guyton. And no gain there. And the Knights will get off the field. Yeah, good job by Evans. They gave up the one long run from Trupp to get the first down. But after that, they settled in. They get a stop, and they'll get the ball back and should be decent field position. And Buddy Rowe is back deep. 
Keelan Pace will kick it away for the Wolfpack. And Buddy Rowe stands at his 40-yard line. Knights figure to get good field position for the first time tonight. A line drive kick. Well, great I say that. Look at this thing bounce and take a Greenbrier bounce all the way back to the 18-yard line. Yeah, and then Buddy Rowe Guerrero tried to pick it up and fumbled it momentarily and had to fall on top of it. So, oh, actually, that was Howard back deep. We'll let Nathan do the math that. on that. I think. I don't think that was. It was Howard, number nine. So Evans' offense looked like they'd get great field position instead. 50, 56 yards. So we've had two punts. Both of them, or, or two of the punts, have, have both been over 50 yards, one for each team. I would not have expected the Knights would be starting inside their own 20. But what a punt. From the 19, and it's Howard trying to get the edge. Stayed on his feet, but dropped at the 24-yard line. Give him five yards. Yeah, yeah, close to six. Good pickup there. So Howard with a nice run. That starts Evans off, puts him in second and short. Again, he averages nine a carry. Up to the 25-yard line, second and four. And running behind Mason Short on that last play, trusting the big fella. 6'5", over 300 pounds, maybe even 6'6". Six, six. Swent on the keeper. Trupp meets him at the line. Ooh. And drops him behind the line. Yeah, Trupp with a, man, he is a strong physical kid. That was a WWE quality tackle. I mean, a, lot, a lot of times you get flagged for that yeah, now. Our hit of the game might be the quarterback hitting the ground yeah, here. Bookmark that one in the truck. Yeah, yeah truck you, usually slam. not allowed to pick somebody up and slam them like that anymore. Yeah, Trump's such a physical player. And again, he's only a junior. Big, strong kid and nice play there defensively. Got, got back to the line of scrimmage, the 25, third and four. Credit Swint, though, he popped right up. Ready to go here on third down. And wanting to th does complete first down. Knights up to the 35-yard line. That's how you follow up a hit like that. You, you know, drop back and deliver a dart right on the money. Uh, Bryson Crew, a junior yeah, on Bryson. receiving end. Yeah, his dad's a longtime coach in Columbia County. Bryson's a heck of a baseball player, power hitting lefty. His older brother, Breton, is playing college lacrosse. And Bryson's really become a good player, on, especially on the defensive side of the ball for Evans. Also, probably not the last time tonight we'll say he's a good baseball player with these two programs. <laughs> it's true. Some of you that weren't with us at the beginning of the game, even during the coin toss, the official mentioned that as well. <laughs> yeah, the World Series getting underway uh, pretty much as we speak. Yep. Game one, Dodgers-Yankees. So as a... Braves fan, who, are you pulling for anybody tonight? Uh, you probably hate both of them, I, right? <laughs> I am pulling for, I can't say what I'm pulling for. Okay. It's, it's funny, but it's not television appropriate. Uh. <laughs> Under a minute to play now, 7-0 Green prior in the first. <laughs> My director knows exactly what I was thinking. And, and pass over complete. the clock will stop at 28.4. I love what I heard from Joe Flacco the other night. He was being interviewed, and I think it was the Manning brothers, and they asked him was he going to be pulling for the Ravens in Monday night football or Sunday night football whenever they're playing. And he said, to be honest, guys, I root I, if there was a way for all other 31 teams to lose <laughs> other than the team I'm on, that's what I'm for. I, I, I agree. You know, and I'm the same way. I'm yeah. a Steel in the NFL, like the Steelers, I hate all other 31 teams. I root for I root for a power outage. How about that? That's the <laughs> nicest way to put it. A big third down play for the Knights. They haven't been able to get a whole lot of offense going against Greenbrier so far. Third and nine. Swint's delivered some passes on the money though. That last one was overthrown, a deep ball, but that's a good. Swings this one out in the flat. Yeah. That's Howard, and Howard 
will be about six yards shy and more than likely the last play of this first quarter. Yeah, it looked like when the ball was thrown, Howard is going to have a ton of room to the outside and just uh, closed quickly by Greenbrier, and Howard elected to go to the inside. You mentioned he's throwing the ball a pretty decent amount here. Yeah. This is a Knights team that runs at 77% of the time, so a little switch up. And that will uh, end the first quarter. The clock will tick down to zero and through 12 minutes of play. Greenbrier seven, Evans nothing. <laughs> Evans down seven to nothing and facing a big fourth down here as we begin the second quarter of play. So another stop by the Greenbrier defense. Yeah, Tyler Wallace on to punt. His last one traveled a good day. Wallace uh, waiting and waiting, and now he's going to punt. kind of a rugby thing, yeah. Gives his team down there to run for coverage, and Clay Borden's going to watch it bounce, and another great punt for the Knights. Tyler Wallace, the MVP so far for this Knights squad. Yeah, he stopped that when we joked last week about stopping one like a wedge in, and that's what he did there. That ball looked like it might bounce to the end zone instead. It stopped and backed up just a hair. You haven't seen my wedges. <laughs> uh, all right, so that brings us to our first QBs by the quarter, brought to you by Culpepper Lumber Ace Hardware. Nathan. Yes, yeah, Stevens for Greenbrier was two of three for 54 yards and, that, and a touchdown, that long pass. Uh, and then Swint was three of four for Evans for 17 yards. Yeah, really, the first quarter came down to that one big play, the 54-yarder yeah. to Ryan Claiborne. And that's where we are, 7-0. That was another 54-yard punt. Yeah, we had Claiborne probably had, you know, two, if not the two biggest plays, two of the top three. The punt, you know, he had a nice kick return and then the, you know, long touchdown. And Cole Tripp had the big tackle and a nice run as well. Three 50-yard punts in the first quarter and change here of this ball game. Claiborne strung out after a gain of three. Claiborne is slippery and lightning quick. And that he could have easily lost yardage there, but he was able to go backwards and get around the edge. To instead of losing two or three, he picks up about two or three. This Greenbrier team, as we mentioned multiple times, trying to fight its way into the playoffs after going five and twenty-five over the last three seasons. Also, Greenbrier's trying never advanced past the first round of the playoffs. That would be the yeah. next little bit of history they would try to make. And they're also trying to beat uh, Evans for the first time in 10 tries, uh, 10 straight for Evans. And that was after they won seven of the first 12 of the two playing each other. And going absolutely nowhere is Bo Polcha. And I think it was Bryson Crew once again in on the tackle. The first man there might have been Guerrero as well. Let's see if we can get a eyes on it. Yeah, Tariko Harper. Well, I was 0 for 2. Tariko Harper with a great tackle yeah, for crew, the Knights. Yeah, crew was there at the end, but it was Harper, the Tennessee State commitment that got it done. Always important to get yourself in the TV frame, That's the right. camera frame, at the end of the play. Uh, Polch on the run. He's the transfer over from Augusta Prep. Yeah, it was one of the best players, Cavaliers' best players early in the season. And... Third down, nothing doing, incomplete. So three and out for the Wolfpack. And that's exactly what Barrett Davis needed. Yeah, neither offense able to get a whole lot going. Evans came in averaging a little over 20 a game, 20.3. 20 Greenbrier even scoring even more. But uh, so far it's been a defensive struggle other than really one play. Yeah, I don't know if it's anything serious, but Claiborne have an issue with one of his hands. Yeah, he, he missed the second half of the Harlem game earlier. And that ball, did it get tipped? It, my Knights came after. Yeah, they got a, I think it got a piece. Either way, our first short-ish punt of the night, and the Knights will have the ball in great field position at the 37-yard line. Okay, we've done a, our darndest to try to explain to you what's going on in this region. Let's take a look at the Region 1 5A standings as they stand entering the night, okay? And then you'll get a better picture of kind of what we're talking about. Yeah. Evans and Greenbrier, okay, you see the top four. The top four get into the playoffs. Yep. Then you've got Greenbrier, Statesboro, and Evans all kind of fighting and jockeying for position. Everybody trying to take over that fourth spot that Glen Academy has. Greenbrier and Evans both still have to play Glen Academy, which is key. And Glen Academy and Effingham County are playing tonight. So if Effingham County wins, 
and Lakeside wins. Brunswick and Lakeside tonight would both be uh, at home for the playoffs. Effingham County would be on the road in all likelihood. And then you would have Glen Academy, Evans, uh, the winner of this game in Effingham County, sort of battling it out for that last spot, it seems. See, it's just that simple. Yeah. And Glen Academy still plays both Evans and Greenbrier. And we found out they're matched up against Region 5, which is Rome's region. Yeah, Rome. No, you don't want to be the four seed necessarily. You want to make the playoffs. <laughs> but Rome, they've outscored their opponents 200 and something to like 40, right? Something yeah. like that this mm. year. Now yeah. here, though, Evans with a great opportunity. And it looks like Hogan is back in at quarterback. Five yards on first down brings up second and five. And it is Hogan. And for the second time, he takes the – Takes it himself, and he'll uh, – they're not going to give it to him. It looks like he's about an inch shy. Yeah, a little slow to get up, too. Nursing it looks like a right ankle leg. So – Call it third and less than a yard. Yeah, and he's going to have to go down here. He's not going to be able to get off the field. Yeah. He's very close to the first down. Matter of yeah, fact, I'm actually in the booth saying it is a first down. Jay Hogan trying to get up and get off the field under his own power. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised they're not measuring this at least. This is right on him. Oh, he is. Not feeling well. Yeah. And he'll go straight to the medical tent. So we'll keep an eye on his situation and hope he's all right. In the meantime, it is going to be – Third and very, very short for the Knights. And what I would imagine is two down territory. Well, and I would imagine both those downs, if you have to, you would run behind big number 75, <laughs> Mason Short. you got a human being that's bigger than all the other human beings on the field. Do you think you, you or me, could we pick up a yard running behind Mason Short right now? I, I, I don't. Nathan Possibly. says he's got it. Nathan I know one thing. I know, speaking of got it, Evans does first I, down. I know one thing. Neither one of us could rush the could could get to the quarterback <laughs> with him blocking us. I promise you that. Uh, big first down for the Knights. The drive continues, and a first down to the 22. Yeah, they're benefiting from what we think. We think they got a, a tip on that punt, set them up with great field position, and they were able to move the football the best they've done it tonight right here in this drive, trying to tie this thing up. Flag down, and that'll give us some time to check in for the first time tonight on the sidelines with Kira Goldstein. Hey, Kira. Hey, guys. Yeah, I heard you guys talking about this region and the projection, and you guys were going over. It's very confusing, I understand, but you guys did a great job explaining it. When I talked to Barrett Davis about it, this is what he said. He said, look, after Hurricane Helene and with everything that's been going on, playing three games in nine days, there's been a lot of uncertainty. And what his team would like right now is some certainty. They want to win their last three games. They want to have their fate in their own hands. They want a for sure thing. He said, we got to go out there. We got to just respond to whatever happens. It's not about us going out there and showing off. It's about us responding to every single single moment so that's what we're seeing out there and we're hoping that Evans can get some certainty in this game guys yeah that is the key thing here that you know both these teams control their own destiny that's the bottom line yeah there's the, there are a few things worse and more stressful in sports as a player as a coach as yeah. a fan than having to rely on somebody else to do something to help you it is you know if, if you, whichever team wins this game I mean, we said it at the outset Whoever goes three and out, or if they go three and out, is in the playoffs. Yep. Simple as that. Three and zero, oh, not three and out. Not to mention the big Columbia County rivalry side of things. Oh here. yeah, they there's wanna, that too. They want to beat each other. That pass incomplete. Third and nine, and it was Aiden Chapel there, the linebacker, 37, who that ball was thrown dangerously close to him. So it's third down. Yeah, Aiden Chapel has 50 tackles this year. Yeah, his brother was a great player here, wore number 34 and played linebacker, was their leading tackler a year ago. Yeah, if it wasn't for a guy named Cole Trupp, he would be their leading tackler. Trupp with 75 stops coming into tonight. Well, Tyler Wallace's long is 41. 
So you'd have to get to the 20. You're either you're in his you're in his range. In his range. Yep. And then again, it doesn't mean he can't kick from longer than that. That's just all he's done. Not gonna matter though, because that's gonna be a first down, and that is gonna be a touchdown. Yeah, great fake. Great. You know, we've had both quarterbacks throw short passes. Antonio Taylor from 22 yards yeah, out. The sophomore with some a little bit of shiftiness there and just a poor angle by the defensive back coming over the safety there. And Taylor with the touchdown ties it up. Well, gives Tyler Wallace a chance to tie it up. And I'll just say Wallace has been efficient on PATs this year. Yeah. And he remains so. It's a brand new ball game with 7.27 left to play between these two rivals. 7.27 left in the first half. Greenbrier, Evans, all knotted at seven. Evans marches 37 yards in six plays, taking 2.38 off the clock and the 22 yard touchdown pass to Antonio Taylor has us all even at seven with 727. Yeah, it was third and 10. Greenbrier had a chance to get a stop and force a field goal, but instead Taylor, thanks to some shifty moves, gets into the end zone. And it was all kind of set up by that punt that was tipped to get them great field position. See the top left hand corner of your screen? That ain't fog, folks. They are grilling up something <laughs> over at the concession stand on the far end of the field that Smells great. And Wallace, who usually puts it in the end zone, and he does this time. Yeah, the PA announcer, Scott Scadden, refers to him as touchdown Tyler. Great job by our crew in the truck. On the spot, as always. What do you think we got here? Some burgers? Oh, burgers for Some sure. dogs? That grease of that burger is getting that thing to flare <laughs> up. You kidding? Now, what do you know about grills? Oh, just a little bit. Yeah, kind of hungry. I know, right I know she needs to get those things off before she burns them. <laughs> <laughs> she's going. Uh, she has no idea she's on live her. television. Look at her working. She's, she's got working. it. She I knows love what, it. She knows what she's doing. All right. Can we can we uh, get somebody to get down there? Or yeah. <laughs> from the concession? So the uh, pack will start from its own 20, 727 left in the first half here. Maybe Kira could go do some scouting on that. Yeah, situation. well, I mean, we should taste it at least. I mean, it's, it's at least we can test. do. All right, on first down, it is Polkja. And A.B. mentioned, transferred in from Augusta Prep. Yeah, he was having a monster year for the Cavaliers. Really, uh, you know, some big games. And, and it came at the right time because Greenbrier had an injury to one of their top running backs, Brennan Bjorkman, their second lead, uh, third leading rusher behind the Trupp and the quarterback Stevens. And so now Polcha kind of fills in on that role. Picked up nine on first down. Stevens will keep. And he'll be dropped at the 30. Yeah. Be close to the first down. And I think the way they spotted it, it's going to be a first down for yeah, Greenbrier. A little bit of tentative run there. I think he felt he had it. For the year, technically, Stevens has had a really good year running the football. 78 carries, 414 yards, and a touchdown. Wow. The, the nose didn't touch the 30, so he's just going to be a couple inches short. Wow. Big third down here. And it's interesting because Trupp is not in there. So, now, hold on. They And they send their the bigger of the two running backs out, Polcha. And so, you got Stevens in a shotgun. I think Claiborne is in there with he him. He is. And he'll get it. And he'll get it. And he'll have some more across the 35 and fights his way up to the 40. So good, hard 11 yard run. Yeah, Claiborne's one of those guys, you, you know, when you start talking about top guys in the area, his name's not thrown around a whole lot, but I'm telling you, he is a big time playmaker. Yeah, might get to see some of him in January. Could, could do it. Speaking of, one week from tonight, we will reveal the rosters for Border Bowl 11. 12, I'm, I'm, I'm one behind. Yeah. And a good hard run on first down, still pushing the pile up to the 45. Give him six. 
So, yeah, next week, one week from tonight on Football Friday Night, we will reveal the players for Team Georgia and Team South Carolina. And Border Bowl 12 will also announce the game's location, the venue for ah, Border Bowl 12. I, like uh, I, I can give you a little bit of a hint. We're going to make a little history this year. Well, wow. just so you tell me before history. January. <laughs> just tell you where to go? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know there was some. We actually had a caller when we did your radio yeah, show. Was yeah. very interested in where the game was going to be. That's right. That is next Friday. And of course, football Friday night also tonight at 11:35. We just won't be announcing the border bowl selections. Cole Trump on oh, second and four. Didn't get a whole lot, but what a stiff arm. He is a hoss. That's about the toughest two you're going to see from 22. Yeah, Trump with a man, a vicious stiff arm there towards the end of that play. These are the kind of drives, though, that Greenbrier has had where they just kind of churn it out, churn it out, and, you know, get down near the goal line and give it to Trump. He's got 11 touchdowns in there, seven games this year. Trying to convert another third down. Claiborne, who got the last one, not this time. Crew, I believe, was the first man in. That was a really slow developing play on a third and short to run. Now, the question is, do they go for it here on fourth down? They might have lost a yard there. Yeah, it's going to be fourth and about a yard and a half. Oh, a big play in this game. I'm guessing it's Halloween theme in the student oh, section yeah. tonight. Oh, yeah. I asked my daughter if she was coming to the game, and she said, I'm not going to waste my Halloween outfit on that <laughs> game. <laughs> Uh, fourth and two, pack from the 48. Trump on the direct snap, he'll have it. And then some, Trump still on his feet into Evans' territory at the 41-yard line. Yeah, he's got to come out, though his helmet came up. Yep. That's what I was expecting to see on third down. They, they ran, like, kind of gave him an option to hand the ball off there. And you see on fourth down, just let Trump run it. To the 41. He just Pick lowered the shoulder and was able to run over some people. And in the end, like I said, his helmet comes off. So he's out for at least one play. That'll bring Polcha back in, and he's met at the line. Yeah, Polcha will get a couple. Yeah, Greenbrier content with this drive, running the clock, 315 and counting. And they would love nothing more than to go down and at the end of the half get some points here. Nice, you got your nice burger fog rolling yeah. in there. In California, that'd be the marine layer, but here it's barbecue layer. <laughs> yeah. Look at that shot. Oh, that's beautiful, guys. <laughs> well done in the truck and up top. See, and when that happens in Covington, it's like a spill <laughs> from a chemical plant. Here, it's just cooking burgers, man. <laughs> it's Conyers. <laughs> or, well, Covington Conyers <laughs> is in that area. Oh, man. But you know what? I stayed in Atlanta. The, the, the <laughs> still working hard. I stayed in Atlanta the weekend following the hurricane. That was the the, the weekend of the Georgia Alabama game. Yeah. And um, driving through Conyers, it it did look like oh, yeah. a San Francisco yeah. fog. It was crazy. So we got the flames under control now. Now we're just putting some cheese on. Two thirty-seven left and a 7-7 tie and a timeout on the field. Don't forget, folks, cast your votes for the player of the week in this week's poll on WJBF.com. That poll is still open yeah. until 11 o'clock tonight, and the winner will be revealed on football Friday night tonight at 11.35 p.m. So get and, your votes in. And every week this year it has been hard to decide. Man, there have been some great performances week in and week out. And usually on a, what, Tuesday, I text you and say, do you, do you have, who, <laughs> yeah, are your, who are your top players? And you'll send me about 12 because it's, it's, it is. <laughs> it's it's hard. Yeah. I've tried to, I've tried to send, Georgia High School Daily sends out the players of the week mm. from the state. So I've tried to make it a point this year on Mondays to send him some so our guys in this area get some attention. You bet. And Stevens all the way down to the 30-yard line, gain of nine. And that'll move the sticks again for Greenbrier. And this drive, A.B., just continues to go. Yep. But speaking of that, Georgia, the Georgia High School Daily, the, a great article this week about former Thompson running back star Jerry Mays, who played at Thompson in the 80s, won back-to-back -back titles in 84 mm -hmm. and 85, 
was the ACC freshman of the year at Georgia Tech, still the second leading rusher at Georgia Tech in school history. He's 56. He's now officiating games, and they were joking about how good a shape he's in, that he might have still been the fastest guy on the field at 56 <laughs> as he's officiating games, but a really nice story done. He was doing a Marist game, and he – Met, he talked to Matt Harpering, and he saw a couple of his teammates in the stands that came down and talked to him that played with – or no, not teammates, Marist players that played against him in the 1984 state championship game. You know, it was a really cool kind of reunion. Love cool stories like that. Yeah, yeah. So many of them. So Greenbrier with the clock running and – now it starts to, you know, you you got to get down there now, a minute and a half. Greenbrier with its full complement of timeouts left, but not much more on second down, a couple for Trupp. Bring up third, and we'll call it seven. Like you said, they've got the, the, the you know, timeouts, but here on third down, do you bring in Stevens and try and throw something, and really do you look for the, you know, the, the screen pass? The middle has been open on that one alignment, um, so let's see what they decide to do. Trupp is staying in there. Clock is running. Yeah, a little surprised they're not yeah, they're a little more giddy up here. Pick up the pace. Really surprised. It sounds like they're playing for a field, a long field goal. Yeah, that is, this is surprising with all three timeouts. LeVon and Simon has hit from 35 this year. Yeah, this would be a long field goal, too. They're a little misdirection. Oh, and a good play call. Um, so that will get Fumble. them. Bumble is out, and no, he's down. we're going to say he was down. And the clock is running. They have not, not called a timeout. 20 seconds now, and less than that. It's fourth down. Fourth down. So I, I'm not – what is what, – what, what's Green happening still, here? I don't know what's going on. Trump on the direct snap, and he'll have it, I think. Do they not the realize clock, the time? We'll stop with 3.7 left to move the chains, but are they going to call? Now they'll call a timeout, and maybe the plan was for a field goal all along. Hey, I mean, obviously, the way they were running the clock it was, but it, to me, why not call the timeout and then run that? I guess they wanted to catch the Evans defense off guard, and if, they, if that's what they wanted, they got a few extra yards for the field goal, but really yeah. kind of odd. Yeah, I think the, the timeout we were looking at before yeah. the before the third down play, which would have given you a lot more options with more time. On it would have, but again, you catch the defense off guard. Maybe that's what they were. That's the only thing I can think they were playing for. And I'm not going to second guess. I mean, Sean Tiernan's been amazing on as the offensive coach at Thompson, and of course what he's done here at Greenbrier. So they are going to kick what looks to be a 35-yard field goal. Yeah, that would equal. LeVon Simons longest this year. Yeah, Simons had a huge punt earlier in the game, but he also had one blocked. Well, we've only seen him, you know, kick on the kickoff and then the extra point. No field goals attempted tonight. Don't forget to stick around for the Kimberly Clark halftime show. Kira Goldstein will have several special guests. We'll pay a visit to our host school, Evans, hear from the Evans Knights marching band. This is Take a big look at scores. Some big scores from around the area, including some that impact this game. This is a big kick. This is a very big because kick. Evans has such a good kicking game, and this game, the way it's being played, it might come down to a extra point or field goal. So this is a really big kick for Greenbrier. From 35 out. He hammered and it, and the junior, yeah, would have been good from 45. Man, he hammered that thing. And that's how the first half will come to an end. So an entertaining first half. A lot of punting, a lot of defense. But through 24 minutes, Greenbrier leads Evans 10 to 7. And Kira Goldstein is standing by with the coach of the Greenbrier Wolfpack, Sean Tierney. Coach, a three-point lead going into the half. How are you going to rally your team to come out aggressive in the second half? We just got to come out like we did this first half, and we got to execute better. We didn't do a very good job offensively. There's a lot of stuff there we're missing on. We're a little, little jumpy um, and, and put ourselves in a bad situation right there, and then we put our defense in a bad situation. So offensively, we got to execute a lot better than we are and just 
to make the plays, okay, I and mean, let it come to us like we did the first drive. So if we do that, we might be all right. The defense has held off Evans to just seven points. How pleased are you with the defensive performance tonight? They're doing really well. We, it's a long game, though. We got a second half, so that's all. That's all done now. So right now we got to go out. We got to re regroup. They're going to make adjustments. We need to make adjustments, and we got to do a better job offensively, letting our defense have a better field position. Appreciate the time, Coach. Thanks so much, guys. Up to you. All right, Kira. Thanks, Sean Tiernan. Thanks. If you close your eyes and just listen, <laughs> yeah, you can hear Kirby Smart and Sean <laughs> yeah, Tiernan. Yeah, yeah, very similar. All right. Greenbrier 10, Evan 7, the Kimberly Clark halftime show is next here on Game Night Live. Welcome back to Game Night Live, where the Greenbrier Wolfpack are in the lead 10 to 7 over the Evans Knights here at halftime. We have so much excitement coming up at halftime, but first, let's take a more in depth look at Evans High School. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome senior. Well, I've been teaching for 14 years before I came here and I just needed a, a change. I think what makes Evans, Evans High School so great is the students um, and the faculty. Uh, the students are so spirited, they're welcoming, they welcomed me with open arms even though I was their wicked theater teacher. <laughs> and so um, I truly enjoy just seeing them again and seeing how they've grown. Um, I was just talking with some um, previous students earlier today and just like I was telling them, they, they see us as human beings in high school, whereas in middle school, they're kind of, you know, thinking you're there to ruin their lives. So, <laughs> um, so it's a big difference in their personality and what they're willing to share. This is kind of obviously where I'm zoned for, but I think out of all the high schools in the county, it's the one that really draws me in the most, like I, the atmosphere here. There's just a lot of spirit. All of the students, or most of the students, really participate in put in their all for when we have spirit weeks or pep rallies, it's just a lot of fun. I came to Evans High School, I graduated from here. For the last seven years that I've been here, it's been a great experience. I think that's what makes it special, like the community aspect, there's a lot of alum here. So coming back to teach where you came to school, in such an old building at that, like, it's special, it's unique. So obviously I was uh, zoned for Evans High School, but I had my, my entire family came through Evans High School, so they were graduates, and they were always active throughout like clubs and stuff. Obviously, I had to come to Evans High School, but I wanted to be more involved. My experience has been excellent. Um, just being in school every day, I'm in like a bunch of clubs. I'm a cheerleader. My best or favorite club will be Student Council, which I'm the VP of Spirit of which is boosting the morale in the school and then just making it more fun for the students. There's a lot more to do in high school. If you get involved, it kind of makes it that much more exciting to come to school every day. It's important to be involved in the school because you never really hear of, for example, football fans um, trashing their home stadium. Getting involved and caring about the school that you're a community of, it means that you're never gonna trash it. You're always gonna love it, so take care of it because it's home. Don't be shy, like be involved, dress up. There's no shame in having school spirit because people are just gonna band with you and you know, it's fun. Like don't just get embarrassed, which is easy to do, but it's better to just be involved and give it your all. Evans is so special to me because of just the spirit and the students and everything they give in and pour into the school to make it better for everyone as a whole. When the hurricane just happened, we really came together and supported everyone. These are only four years you get once in your life, so make it the best that you can and just live life. Definitely come out to the football game. Come support your team, your school. Come get involved with the student section. Come listen to band play. We got some cool stuff. Back down here on the sideline, I have my friend Michael from McDonald's. Michael, why don't you introduce yourself to our viewers and tell us a little bit about your role. Uh, my name is Michael. I'm the store manager at Evans Town Center. And what do you do as the manager? I run the store. I basically do the schedules. I, uh, you know, make sure everyone's on top of their tasks. I know that McDonald's does a lot in the community. What does it mean to McDonald's to be able to give back to young students? Uh, it means a lot. I mean, it just helps the community grow, help it like keep it on track and keep kids safe and like something that's like beneficial for the community. 
What are some benefits that young kids can have be working at McDonald's, like students that work at McDonald's? Uh, we do offer a, a college program that helps pay for tuition and stuff like that if they continue to make certain hours with our company and then they help pay for tuitions and books. And it's like kind of like a scholarship within McDonald's. Amazing. What are some things that people should look out for happening at their local McDonald's right now? Uh, we have a new frappe coming out. It's called uh, Doce, Tres, Doce Leche and then the McRib is coming back as well so most people are excited for that all right i am very excited for that thank you so much michael for talking with us we appreciate it right now we're going to check in on the field and we'll have more excitement coming up in just a minute Welcome back down to the sideline. I have one of my very favorite people, Taylor Newton. Taylor, why don't you introduce yourself and tell everyone what you do at WJBF. Hi, Kira. I am Taylor Newton, and I'm the Director of Community Involvement at WJBF News Channel 6, but I'm also the Border Bowl uh, Coordinator. I know that our Border Bowl roster is going to be coming out next week. Can you tell us all of the excitement surrounding Border Bowl 12? Yes, so we are excited. The location and the 42-man <laughs> rosters are going to be announced next Friday. Tune in to Channel 6 FFN at 1135 next Friday, November 1st. Uh, I have seen the rosters. They are filled with talent, and Coach Boyder, Harlem's head coach, and Coach Bush, North Augusta's head coach, have their staff, and they had their teams ready to go, and we are so excited. It's going to be a great Border Bowl, um, as always. Always, we are raising money for Donald uh, Ronald McDonald House. So come out in about two weeks. The tickets will be on sale. Come out, support, and see the seniors um, play maybe their last game or get recruited and keep playing in college. It's one of my favorite events of the year. I'm very, very much looking forward to it. You might not know this. Taylor does do Border Bowl, but she also does so many other things. <laughs> Taylor, why don't you brag on yourself a little bit? Just oh, talk no. about a few of the other things that we do together. We do scholar athletes we together. Do. What else do we do, Taylor? Um, so I'm the coordinator for scholar athletes, so I get to go with Kira to the schools to award our senior athletes in the CSRA. Um, so nominate your students now. Um, we also do Golden Apple with Brad Mean, so nominate your teachers now. And we also do a couple other things, giving your best and and we have um, celebrating black excellence and we have women to watch and we have salute to service. So go to WJBF.com and nominate all your favorite people today for an award. There is nothing, <laughs> there's nothing that Taylor can't do, guys. She is amazing. She's one of my sweet, adorable friends, and it's such a pleasure to work with her. Thank you, Taylor, for coming Absolutely. on, telling us a little bit about Border Bowl. We cannot wait. Border Bowl 12 in January. We're very much looking forward to it. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back. Don't go anywhere. I've said this a million times. I'm going to say it again. So much more excitement in store. Welcome back to Game Night Live at Evans High School, where the Knights are trailing the Wolfpack 10 to 7. This is not the game that I think a lot of people thought we were going to see. I think we thought we were going to see a much higher scoring game. We'll see if that changes in the second half. I do want to get a quick injury update in there on Evans EJ Hogan. We have Burke Health on the sideline tonight helping out. I went over and I talked to one of their officials. He said that Hogan has had two prior surgeries on that right knee. So when he tweaked it tonight, there was some concern about whether or not he would be able to come back in the second half. He was walking on it a little bit, trying to get some range of motion. He was icing it as well. They said 
sure that they were going to take him into the locker room, see what they could do for him at halftime, and there was hope that he could come back in this second half. That is not confirmed as to whether or not he will be back. We are hoping that we do get to see him. It's something that I will be asking Evans head coach Barrett Davis when we talk to him right before the kickoff of second half. You know, there's a lot more excitement happening all over the area tonight. Evans is not the only exciting place on a Friday night, so we're going to send it up to John and AB. They're going to give us some stats on this game and talk about some other games happening in the area. Guys, take it away. Yeah, Kira, thanks. And, and to your point about the offenses, both of them uh, a little bit behind their pace for the season. Uh, Greenbrier averaging 25 a game has 10 so far. Evans averaging 20 a game, uh, only seven thus far. But new half, things can change. We'll hear from Barrett Davis shortly. But uh, we've been talking about all night the uh, these two teams control their own destiny, but they're obviously doing some scoreboard watching as well, as are we up here in the booth. Absolutely. And uh, there are some big games and some key games that matter uh, for sure to the uh, to the teams playing tonight, Evans and Greenbrier, including a big matchup between Effingham Cl uh, County and Glenn. But let's start up there. Lakeside looks like they're going to roll to their uh, eight uh, or to an eight and one mark. The forty-five to six. That's actually against uh, uh, they're playing uh, in Savannah against in that Bravo Institute. Yeah, they're playing Bravo Institute. Thompson crushing uh, Josie. 69 zip. How about Saluda and Strom Thurmond? Two good football teams there. Saluda 14 to seven. And, and, uh, and to your to that Saluda Strom Thurmond game. Saluda, if they win that game, would set up a massive showdown between one and two in the state. Yeah, Batesburg in double A with Batesburg Leesville. If Saluda, if the Tigers can get past the Rebels, uh, that would be a battle of unbeaten's one week from tonight. That's right. Baldwin leading West Side 28 seven. Aquinas in a dogfight with West Lawrence. Barnwell, we couldn't get a score in that Barnwell Edisto game. Uh, Fox Creek trying to get a win over Swansea to snap a losing streak. And Effingham County Glen Academy, that's the one that means a lot to Evans and uh, Greenbrier. If Effingham County wins, that's the third loss in region play for Glen Academy. And if Greenbrier holds on to win, that means next week the winner of that game would definitely be in the playoffs. Greenbrier would have the tiebreaker over Glen Academy. Uh, as well if they're able to get that win. So it wouldn't matter what happened in the final week of the season. So big, big matchup there. That, But the interesting thing, Glen Academy is playing Effingham County tough. Effingham County is 4-4 four and four on the year, but they blew out both Evans and Greenbrier, despite the fact that Greenbrier has played Brunswick tough, they played Lakeside tough, they played Harlem tough. That was the one team that kind of got away from them. But tonight, Glen Academy hanging in there. And Greenbrier will be at Glen Academy one week from tonight in what could be another crucial uh, crucial showdown in Region 1-5A. Inside the final minute of halftime, then they'll reset the clock to three minutes and let the players warm up as the Kimberly Clark halftime show continues. Gives us a chance to run down some of the first half stats for you. And uh, as you would imagine from the scoreboard, uh, tilted a little bit toward Greenbrier. Total yards, Greenbrier 127 to Evans 79. Uh, Greenbrier with 54 passing yards, but but almost all of that came on one play. Yeah, that's right, the screen to uh, Claiborne. Claiborne, by the way, uh, individually over 100 all-purpose yards and the touchdown. So big first half for Ryan Claiborne. And there you see the uh, pretty clean game, no turnovers. And really only 32 yards in penalties. It's been relatively clean all the way around. And one of the things that stands out when you look at the Evans individual stats is Tyler Wallace. We know him more as a kicker, but as a punter tonight, three punts, he's averaging 51.6 yards mm. per punt. Yeah, it's rare. Nathan made the point uh, during the halftime show while Kira was uh, doing an interview that it is rare that he hands us the halftime stats and the most impressive one is yeah, the punter. The punter. So that has happened tonight for Tyler Wallace. We'll take one more timeout, and we'll come back with the second half kickoff. Greenbrier will get the ball first. Thanks for watching the Kimberly Clark Halftime Show. Second half coming up on Game Night Live. We're ready for the second half at John Pierce Blanchard Stadium here on the campus of Evans High School. 10-7, Greenbrier leads Evans in this, what amounts to a playoff game in the regular season. And all important game in Region 1-5A. Kira's waiting on Coach Barrett Davis of Evans while she does that. Let's uh, get you up to date on how we got where we are with some first half highlights. Yeah, the first one was a huge play. The little screen pass, nobody near Claiborne. Then he uses that blazing speed and is able to get to the corner for the touchdown. 54-yarder that put Greenbrier out front. 
And Evans trying to run here with the quarterback, and boy, Cole Trupp just had nothing of it, slamming uh, the quarterback to the ground. Swint, the big defensive play there by Cole Trupp. And then Evans, a little screen pass to the receiver of their own. That's Antonio Taylor, the sophomore, with some nifty moves for the touchdown. All right, Kira does have Barrett Davis, the coach of the Evans Knights, on the sidelines. Kira. Coach, a one-score ball game. What was your message to the team at the half to get them more aggressive in the second half? Well, it's just, I mean, we, we had a bus, something that we practiced all week, um, first drive, and gave them an easy score there. But, you know, we, we answered back, and they kind of, they did good clock management getting down to, to get a field goal at the end and stuff there. But we've got to come out, we've got to get a stop on defense here and be able to move our stuff. We're getting opportunities offensively, we feel, but we've got to be able to cash in on those things and not shoot ourselves in the foot with penalties um, and just hitting the right holes on the runs. So Defense has gotten Greenbrier off the field multiple times. How pleased are you with their performance tonight? I'm pleased with their performance. I mean, besides like, you know, one play, we've we've done very good, I think, defensively and stuff and making them earn stuff. We're fine if they earn something, but we don't need to give up cheap stuff. Is there an injury update on EJ Hogan? Um, he's going to be out for this game for right now and stuff. We don't know anything else stuff, but just kind of an old injury. So. Thanks for the time, Coach. Appreciate Thank it. You. All Thank right, you. guys, we're going to send it back up to you. Let's get this game going. All right, Kira, thanks. Coach, thanks for the time. And we got 24 minutes left to settle this one, A.B. Yeah, and it's anybody's ball game, obviously, up in the air. Greenbrier with that late field goal on the final play of the first half, the difference. And, uh, I, again, I think it's going to come down to, the, you know, the final possession or two of this ball game. And before we get started in the second half, let's get you your QBs by the quarter for the second quarter. Yeah, so for Evans, Swint was four of six for 39 yards and a touchdown in the first half. And then Stevens, who's about to get the ball here for Greenbrier, is two of four for 54 yards, a uh, long touchdown to Claiborne. QBs by the quarter brought to you as always by Culpepper Lumber, Ace Hardware. Greenbrier will get the ball first. Remember, Evans won the toss but elected to get the ball in the first half. And now Greenbrier will run to more traditional <laughs> returning spot on the field. It was going to be an interesting strategy not yeah. to have anybody back. And well, flag flies to start the second quarter or half. They probably feel like it's a little bit of a moot point. <laughs> with, yeah, with, with Wallace back Taylor. Yeah. Tyler. Tyler yeah. yeah, with Wallace, you know, kicking, you're right, absolutely. I mean, even with the five yards, I'd easily get this ball still in the end zone. Yep. He probably, he's competitive. He probably likes the challenge. <laughs> back it up five more and let him show off his leg a little bit. He's only got a few more games of high school to do it. Will he be one of the Border Bowl participants for one more game in January? We'll have to wait till next weekend to find that out. Yep, next Friday night, 11:35. There if this were the NFL, he would want to drop it now inside the 10-yard line. That's yeah, the sweet spot. That's right. Yeah, there are a ton of teams in the state would love to have a kicker like him oh, coming up in man, the playoffs. Oh, man, are you kidding? I love which, – which college coach recently? Was it Arizona State? Or who was it? He said – well, I'm having tryouts tomorrow. <laughs> if you're on this campus and you can kick, be there. I and feel like Clemson did that a few years back. Well, uh, you know, Washington State did it. You know, yeah. You know, uh, Leach. Mike Leach. Yeah, Leach did it. But, you know, and it, the coach at the end, he said, I'm not kidding. I'm deadly serious. So, <laughs> we need a kicker. So, we're set to go again. I'm a little surprised more high schools don't do that. I'd be surveying the soccer team. Yeah, Kiffin did it at Ole yeah. Miss as well. You remember he goes, yeah. I think we found him in a frat house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Wallace with another touchback. And the Wolfpack will bring it out to the 20-yard line. Well, which team – Stutters first, you know, we haven't had a turnover yet. It's been relatively clean penalty-wise. You know, that could be the difference in this thing, just the way it's it's a close game. One little misstep could be the difference in the game. So, looks like Stevens is in there to start the second half at quarterback. They. He is your quarterback, but they'll put Cole Trupp in there and direct snap it to him a lot. And on first down, the carry is Polcha. And Polcha still on his feet. Didn't get much. Broke a couple of tackles. Yeah, he lost, maybe lost a couple. And it will be a loss of two. Yeah, again, 
Polcha just this is just his second team with Green or second game, excuse me, with Greenbrier. He is in there. Brennan Bjorkman, a sophomore running back, injured. And so Polcha's stepping in and playing in his spot. Polcha also an underclassman. He's a junior. Stevens to throw on second down and a little bit too wide. Well, yeah, he's looking for Elijah Harris. Well, he was very patient waiting on Harris to break across the middle, but then he, you know, he waited and waited and waited. Then he got a little excited and put a little too much on that one. Well, you mentioned Bjorkman missing this game and missing some games. So we did our what amounts to our game night live dress rehearsal before the week before the season. Yeah. And it was Greenbrier and Richmond Academy, and boy, he, I thought he was going to just have a breakout season. Yeah. And injuries have just kind of derailed that a little bit. He's, he's going to have a good career. He's just a 10th grader. And a little confusion on the Evans defense. It looked like Stevens will throw and incomplete on third down. Yeah, Claiborne broke. I think there was some confusion on the Greenbrier offense as well. Yeah, Claiborne broke open in the secondary and wanted the football. And Stevens was looking in the other direction, did not throw to him. So Greenbrier. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what Sean Tiernan wanted. Or, I'm sorry, uh, Barrett Davis wanted. Yeah, and again, you know, they've already got one punt and got a piece of it. Maybe they'll get another here as they're trying to get good field position. Howard is back deep to return the punt. Another good kick. Yeah, this one's good. And takes a Greenbrier bounce to the 40. Three-ish yard line. It was interesting. We, we, Kira mentioned it earlier. We talked about it a little bit. Uh, Barrett Davis, Sean Tiernan have known each other for a long time. They have coached together at Burke County and Lakeside. And it was interesting hearing Barrett Davis during his conversation this week say that, you know, they're good friends. They're not going to talk tonight or today. <laughs> uh, but what's interesting is starting tomorrow, they can help each other out. Oh, yeah. With, with some for scouting. Sure. Because sure. they're going to play some p opponents in common that, that they've each seen that the other one has not yet. So, enemies tonight, but. For enemies tomorrow. For enemies tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as long as they're coaching at these two schools, they're going to have some nights where they're not, they're not <laughs> friends. <laughs> Short gain on first down up near the midfield marker. That was Howard. Yeah, Jeremy Howard, another underclassman that will be back next year for this night's team. Mason Short playing in his next to last home game. What a career he's had here. The One of the most heavily recruited players to ever play in the entire area, much less just Columbia County. That's going to go against the Knights. That's, I believe that was Tariko Harper. No, actually that was Bryce Johns who stepped, over, stepped out <laughs> there, or stepped before the snap there. Yeah, very good chance that, that Mason would be headed to Tuscaloosa if Saban yeah. hadn't retired. That's true. Yeah, he was a, That's a shame. early commitment to Alabama. And when Saban left, he decided to reopen his recruiting, and he narrowed it down to four, and one of those four the University of Georgia, and that is where he decided to go. And, again, he will graduate early, so he'll be at, uh, in Athens in December or January. Howard, good, Howard. hard run. will pick up the first down into Greenbrier territory at the 46-yard line. Yeah, Par Parker Brantley, the sophomore with the tackle. But it's a first down for Evans, and the Knights on the move here trying to take the lead. They haven't led in this game. Hawk Law Group first down. Howard held it just 21 yards in the first half, gets half of that on the first down run. From the Greenbrier, 46. Yeah, well, he got back, it's not offsides on the defense there. Howard picking and weaving his way through traffic. Now he's got the edge, and he'll pick up another first, well, Thought he had the first down, and he was shoved out of bounds and hard. Good, good sportsmanship there by the Greenbrier players helping him up. Indeed. I think some folks thought he was hit out of bounds. And there is a flag right there. Yeah, let's see. He might have got hit out of bounds here. 
because it looks like right there that defender. Well, that defender that might have got about, yeah. And then he also got hit late. Got hit uh, coming in uh, late was number 13, Craig Johnson, who I think hit him out of bounds. Let's see what the call is. Again, our official is Mark Attaway. We'll let him and his crew straighten all this out. Well, that's a big penalty if it's a 15-yarder. Face it mask. On the defense, that penalty is going to result in a first down. They could have could have got the late hit, too. They go with the face way. mask, yeah. That's a huge penalty. So, Evans down three, this drive that started way back at their own 20-yard line. Yeah, this is a huge, huge possession here for the defense uh, for Greenbrier. They got it. Their 44 yard line. Yeah, 44. Say. Yeah, they got to get a stop here. Evans with it right at the 20. They're at the 20. Yes. And a huge gain on first down. It's going to be a first down and they're going to mark him out at the one foot line. Wow. Was that Taylor again? Antonio Taylor, who had the big run in the first half for the Knights. The sophomore trying to – he's been watching our games and the McDonald's offensive player of the game. He's trying to make his – stake his claim here. Yeah, had a 22-yard touchdown run in the first. And that the in was motion. good for 44 yards. Yeah, the in-motion okay. red zone. You bet. First and goal, Knights. Hogan keeps it. That's scores. Howard. That's Howard, I think. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Jeremy Howard in for his fourth touchdown of the season. So the first lead of the game for the Evans Knights, 13 to 10, as we await Tyler Wallace's extra point. And Tyler Wallace for the point after. Evans has taken advantage both though both their scoring drives. They've gotten great field position. And they've taken advantage of the short fields and been able to punch it in. And Antonio Taylor has been made big plays on both drives. He got the touchdown on the first one, and this time he came very close to the touchdown with a 19-yard run. And automatic. Tyler Wallace gives Evans a 14-10 lead, 9-0-1. Left to play in the third. Evans has jumped ahead for the first time tonight, 14-10 in this must-win game for both teams. And while we got a moment, let's tell you about the Georgia Army National Guard. They offer so much more than you might think. Get a degree with money for school, learn job skills that translate to the civilian world, make bonds that last a lifetime, and earn pride for life. When you become a Guard soldier, your family will thank you, your country will thank you, and your future will owe you. The Georgia Army National Guard. Pretty good trivia question here at halftime. It's not the Game Night Live trivia question, which is coming up later in this quarter, but uh, they give away a prize to a fan who gets the trivia question right here. And it was, how many head coaches has Evans had since 1958? I wouldn't have got it off the top of my head. I could think of about 10. The, the, the answer, if you want to reveal yeah, it. Yeah, it was, it was uh, 13. Yeah. I could think of 10. Hopefully Coach Davis isn't superstitious. <laughs> so let's see how Greenbrier answers here. The first time they've kind of been uh, punched in the mouth a little bit tonight. Yeah, first time they've trailed in this one. And again, they've lost 10 straight to Evans, but they've had such an improved team this year compared to the last few. But right now they find themselves down four in the third quarter. That's Polcha. Polcha's been busy tonight and a Give him five up to the 25-yard line. Bring up second and five. I got to tell you, I credit, you know, coaches like Sean Tiernan, uh, Mark Boyder at Harlem. It would be hard for me not to go, hey, Cole, <laughs> you, you're playing the whole game. Both sides. But uh, Bolcher there with a nice run on first down. And he's behind Stevens again. And this time, not much. The bad thing is, Trump is so important to their defense 
that they they have to play him on defense. Now, on offense, they can give him breaks and stuff, but he can't come out much on defense. Yeah, you can go back to that re- yeah. week, week one game against Harlem. And yeah. So hot opening week in mm-hmm. August that he played a ton of snaps in yep. that game. Yep. Well, he leads him in tackles with 75 coming into tonight, averaging over 10 tackles a game. He leads him in rushing yardage, rushing touchdowns. Well, how big is this third down, by the it's way? A, it's a big one because, again, mo- momentum-wise, it's really big. Evans has already scored here in the second half to take the lead. And now a third and five, huge pickup and a huge conversion by the Wolfpack up to the 41-yard line, and guess who? Yeah, Claiborne. I, you know, if I'm – if I'm, and it looks like that's what Braden Stevens is doing. I'm just watching number two. He's so quick, so elusive. He can get open. And you know what? He catches the football, too. He's in great hands. 16-yard grab up to the 41-yard line. And there's Cole Trupp coming back in. Number 22. Yeah, he'll, he'll get the direct snap. And it looks like they're setting up for a run to the right. Let's see what they do here. Ear lips to God's ears, A.B. And pick up a four. Man, those fans are into it. I love it. They called him back after a two-yard gain, so it'll be second and eight. Our, our good friend Casey Heckathorn, his daughter Natalie, who is a commit to Georgia Southern in soccer, she is the fan section leader as that Greenbrier gets a nice run. She is She's at Greenbrier. She is the leader of kind of the Greenbrier student section. So he told me she is dressed tonight as a giraffe, though. So she should stand out if we get a look <laughs> at the Greenbrier. You don't miss a lot of giraffes. <laughs> but a 20-yard gain for Trupp and another first down for Greenbrier. This drive starting to pick up some momentum. Ain't broke. Don't fix it, Trupp, again. Yeah. Well, Six we, more yards. This is what we saw in the second half against Harlem. You know, Trupp. Even though he's playing a lot, he runs so hard and he just wears the defense down. And see if they keep him in there. We'll take another look at the Busby's instant replay on this run by Trupp. Yeah, that was the first one. And boy, great, great run getting to the corner. And then, you know, he's not going to run out of bounds. Yeah, he's, no. he's not looking to avoid contact. He is a hoss. Now they got Claiborne in the backfield with him, Nathan's pointing out. Second and five. Oh, Trump this oh, time. Oh, what in the a play air. call. Beautiful play call. It is Polcha inside the five. What a play call by Sean Tiernan and his staff. They ran the dangerous Claiborne out in motion, and it looked like they were going to throw a screen. Claiborne faked it beautifully, and instead, Trump hits Polcha for a big gainer. Uh oh, they oh, fumble the snap, and Trump I think we're going to have a penalty. Not expecting the snap. Let's go back to the previous play. That's a 28-yard gain. What a play call. Man, that is spectacular. I love seeing the chest match. Watch, watch Trump look like he was going to run, and then he just tosses it over the top to Polcher. I love the chess match the between offense. these Nobody two coaches. Set. Down remains first. And Greenbrier was trying to go fast, catch the yeah. defense on their heels a little bit, and instead uh, went a little too fast. Boy, and that hurts them too. They were down right at the goal line, and – yeah, it backs him up to the six. Well, you remember those Thompson offenses that Sean yeah. Tiernan ran for so many years at the Brickyard, and that that, that had some it was yeah. reminiscent of that. Oh, what a great play call, and it was fe- it was just played perfectly by Claiborne and Trupp. It's first and goal, and Claiborne trying to get the pylon. Claiborne touchdown. Well, he is so fast. They had it played right. They had him. But he's so quick. They had two players. Watch this. Evans had this played well. They got two guys right there. It looks like there's no way he scores. And he just breaks the tackle, uses that speed. Claiborne with his second score of the night. What an answer by Greenbrier. And his third of the season, and Greenbrier back on top in this seesaw battle. You can tell both these teams want this thing. Oh, absolutely. They know that they are fighting for their postseason life tonight. Another flag going to be down here. False start on uh, Greenbrier. This is a big kick here. This is a really big kick. We'll retry. If you don't make this, 
now and, Evans, a field goal gives Evans the lead. And so. Evans with one of the best kickers in the air. Yeah, probably the best. Yeah. Although the tonight, state. tonight also Keelan Pace has been great. We knocked the 35-yard field goal in, but this is a big one here. So in, he's gonna, they're gonna hold it at the 15. So it'll be 25 yards. Shouldn't be a problem, but it's see what they do. So with 5:21 left in the third, Greenbrier is back on top, and it's time for the game night live trivia question. I had several options to go with, but tonight's category A B is championship history. Uh oh, here I, we go. I actually decided to go a little easy on you tonight. Okay. So get your pens and papers out at home. Don't be googling. The question is, between these two programs, how many combined baseball championships? Between Evans and Green. Okay, okay, I'm going with that one. I feel like you, this is this is a, a little bit of a chip shot for you, but maybe not for our fans at home. These two are the best baseball programs in the state of Georgia for the last, gosh, 40 years. So we'll let you think about that at home and. We'll await the Greenbrier kickoff. Another reminder to cast your votes for the player of the week in this week's player of the week poll at WJBF.com. The poll will remain open until 11 o'clock tonight, and then we will reveal the winner on football Friday night at 11.35. Gianna Cephalou and Graham Lee, Danielle Springsteen, the whole FFN team back at Television Park getting ready for 30 minutes of highlights. And we're getting ready for a big oh, game wow. by Evans. Check that flag down at the bottom of your screen. So we will see if it stands. We've lost AB. He's doing math. Adding he, up state he, championships. He is working hard on this one. He is not going to be happy if he misses this one. <laughs> oh, no, he, I've he, already worked. I was I putting mean, down the years they won. What are you talking about? I, already, I, I think he has to wear his, his day-old Halloween costume next week if he doesn't get this right. I want to see him wear the giraffe costume if, uh, <laughs> if he misses this one. Well, Natalie's going to college on a soccer scholarship. I don't think I can fit the, in the, the giraffe outfit. <laughs> we'll find you one. <laughs> We've got a lot of stuff in the attic at WJBF. Like this is going to go against on the return team. Oh, that's a First that's down. a big blow there. We talked about Excuse how clean Evans. the game has been, but that's a big penalty. It negates a great run. And luckily, it didn't take them back. Let's see, have they marked this? Yeah, it didn't take them back that far. So it's they still got decent field position from the 34. Yeah. <laughs> well, Greenbrier answered Evans. Let's see if Evans can respond here. And it's Howard. Yeah, he's been outstanding tonight. And oh, so he's still on his feet. Somehow stayed on his feet. And he's in the Greenbrier territory inside the 25 and a flag after the play. Was that Howard or was that? It was not Howard. That was Braden Johnson, uh, a junior running back. Let's see what the flag is. Was it? Did they get his face mask trying to bring him down again? First time we've called Johnson's name tonight, but better late than never. That was uh, Evans. Are they walking back? That was Forty yards if it stands. Oh man, Evans is walking back. Uh, two penalties in a row, just backbreakers there for Evans. A big kick return, and then an even better run. Mark Attaway is about to break some Knights' hearts. It's holding, holding. on the offense. Holding. It's still a first down. Yeah, Braden Johnson with a great run but it's negated by the penalty. And after well, just three penalties in the first half, two in a row here on this drive. We wondered how he kept his feet in, in all that traffic. Now we know. So after all that, it'll be first and 10 from the 45 yard line. This is Howard, and he'll be dragged uh, down behind lose. the line. Yeah, he's going to lose about four or five. And in the Trupp, you mentioned, plays both ways. Yeah, 
and just getting it done on both sides of the football tonight. Man, he's just, you know, and he's a big, strong kid, but he's got speed. He, you know, he reads that play and he attacks. And uh, they're going to mark him down at the 42, so he only loses three. So second and 13. You know, those penalties were big penalties, but where the hold happened, it didn't punish him as much mm -hmm. as it could have. So, you know, the kick, they had to go back to the 34. The run, they only had to go back to the 45. But second and 13 here. And Swint sails it out. Oh, almost. That oh, was a dangerous oh, pass. Oh, yeah. Almost picked off by Vercari Guyton. That was really, really dangerous. Uh, he already has two picks this year, and that was very close to being a third. Yeah, they, they saw that, the, you know, the play developed a little bit slowly and the Greenbrier defense was able to respond to it. He, the receiver was open. If the play happens faster and they get the ball out quicker, they got a completion. But instead, the ball it took a little while to get the ball there and Guyton was able to recover and make a play. A.B., I think your car is being towed. <laughs> Well, it's already it, – I, I parked beside a cop, so he probably towed it quick <laughs> if he was going to do it. He's had plenty of time. Third and 13, Swint. And, again, overshoots his man. And Evans will be in a kicking situation. Yeah, fourth and 13, a shame for Evans because, again, they got the nice return, then they got the nice run. Penalties on both plays. And now – So now Evans will have to punt it away to Greenbrier. Still plenty of time left. I mean, we're late in the third quarter. Still plenty of football. But with the way Greenbrier can suck the life out of a, the, the clock, you know, with the way they can run the football. 17-14, we thought it would be a dog fight, and it has been. And another line drive kick on a hop. Claiborne. Corrals it, and it'll be brought down at the 24-yard line. Well, folks, we mentioned that the World Series begins tonight, the Dodgers and the Yankees. I want to take you back. It's hard to come to Evans High School without, especially in October, without yeah. taking you back to October 30th, uh -oh. 2001, Game 3 of the World Series at chills. Yankee Stadium. And President George W. Bush, in one of the most memorable moments in really baseball history, uh, throwing out the first pitch before game three. And, of course, this was just a few weeks after 9-11. And I love the stories that have come out about this where uh, usually people throw the first pitch from in front of the mound. He said, yeah. nope, I'm going I'm to the mound. The, I'm a baseball guy. I'm a baseball guy. Of course, he had owned the Texas Rangers. And if you live through this moment, this might have been the most important pitch in baseball history. And the reason we show it to you tonight is on the receiving end, the catcher, Evan's own Todd Green. Right there. One well, of my great friends growing up, and what a cool moment. And, you know, he was not even supposed to be there. It was supposed to be Posada. Mm -hmm. But Roger Clemens is notorious for working out long right before the game and staying in the bullpen, and he wanted Posada to stay. They said, Greeny, grab your glove. And he got to be a part of one of the greatest moments in history. And, by the way, if you're a Todd Green fan, this year the Evan, I can't give anything away, but I'll just say this. The Evans baseball team has got a cool thing happening coming up this baseball season, and it has to do with Todd. So you'll definitely want to be kind of keeping an eye on that. Can't wait. And and a couple of years ago on the 20th anniversary of that yeah. pitch, you actually helped facilitate it. I uh, had a chance to sit down with Todd for a one-on-one -on -one interview about that night. And I tell you, I could have talked to him for two hours yeah. about it. We ended up talking for about 45 minutes as Stevens breaks free up to the 35-yard line. That'll be a first down for the Wolfpack. But just the stories he had, yeah. and, and I'll actually uh, – Post that to my my, state, my Facebook and Twitter uh, uh, later this yeah, week on I'd the thirtieth. Like I'd like to watch it again. Yeah, the uh, actual anniversary. But well, the cool thing too, you know, it wasn't cool. That obviously a terrible thing, but Todd's perspective is so great because mm -hmm. not only did he catch the pitch, but you know, he was there when it happened. He was across the river in his apartment, seven miles mm -hmm. away by you know, by, as the crow flies. And the next morning, there was debris seven miles away on his front stoop. Uh, from uh, what you know, the, those those terrorist attacks and the buildings going down, and as things kind of tend to come full circle, you have the Yankees back in the World Series this yep. year, and last year the Diamondbacks, who actually won that World Series in 2001, were in the World Series. And Todd, the the cool thing for Todd too, he was a reserve and and you know backup catcher, but 
He did get to bat in a World Series against Randy Johnson, and he got a double. So pretty, pretty cool. He did happen to mention that. <laughs> I know Todd, Todd Wood. Uh, so second and nine as the Wolfpack try to a run clock and b put some more points on the board. Up 17-14, getting kind of late here in this third quarter. And what, what a nice shoestring tackle made by. Well, it's like Johnny Moore, number 23. Yeah, we talked about the really dangerous pass that Evans threw. That was a really dangerous. If Johnny Moore was paying attention to the ball and not the receiver, that's a pick six. He was looking at the receiver and didn't realize how dangerously close to him that ball was for Greenbrier fans. That would have been a disaster for the pack. And a big third down for this Evans defense, trying to get off the field. Yeah, really big play. Stevens with time. Oh, and there's your pick. Buddy Rowe. Buddy Rowe Guerrero. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to catch him. He can fly. They do get him, though. Just tripped up at the 20-yard line. Huge play for this Evans defense. Yeah, Braden Stevens waited and waited, and then he just simply overthrew that pass. Really, you know, that's one you almost want him to eat. And he just tried to make a play. He had a receiver there, but he overthrew it. And Guerrero able to get the pick. And then a nice return as well. And Plocha was able to – or Polcha was able to trip him up there because that might have been six. So the ball at the 16 now. Evans set up great here on the interception. And we said nobody's blinked yet as far as turnovers go. Greenbrier the first to do it. And it bears repeating one more time, and we'll probably say it a couple of more times. This is like a playoff game in the regular season. Both of these teams need to win to control their own destiny as far as getting into the postseason. And, and Howard going. Howard a couple of yards on first down. Claiborne actually in there to make the tackle. Yeah, this is, a, you know, if you're Evans here, you got the momentum. I'm a little surprised maybe they didn't take a shot here there. But it's second down and eight after the two-yard pickup. Inside the final minute now. Yeah, might uh, get one more play in here in the third quarter. Maybe two. Let's see. It looks like maybe they were just trying to draw them off there. A lot of movement in that around in the Evans offense there. Howard stands with Swint. Swint will keep, and he'll be knocked down. Yeah, he might lose a yard Oof. there. Big hit at the end of that play, and that will be the final play of quarter number three. Yeah, a little bit of confusion there, but uh, that'll wrap up three quarters of play. Evans on the move, but down 17 to 14 to Greenbrier here at John Pierce Blanchard Memorial Stadium. Wow, we got 12 minutes to decide this game between two arch rivals trying to fight their way into the postseason. 17-14, Greenbrier after three. <laughs> ah, the Evans student section on a Halloween theme night. Up for a big third down for the Knights from the 14-yard line, third and eight. I like the kid ripping his shirt off. We need to, we need to hook him up with a shirt. We said <laughs> they got rowdy for us. I like it. And just oh, wow. like that, Christian Scott, his second touchdown grab of the year, and Evans back on top. Wow, they got back quick and throw the quick touchdown. Evans takes their second lead of the game. And they'll try to make it a four-point game with the extra point. Scott with the touchdown catch. That's a good drive by Evans. They benefit, or a good uh, you know, result from Evans benefiting from the interception. Another short field that when you give them the short field, they've been able to punch it in all three times. Legal substitution there. The average starting position on their three drives has to be somewhere around the 30-yard line of Greenbrier. They had it at their own 44, they had it at the Greenbrier 20, and then they had another one deep in Greenbrier territory. So they have really benefited from the block punt, the fumble, or excuse me, the interception, 
And then one time just, they, you know, he had pinned Green Bar back and got good field position. And Tyler Wallace with the point after. And Evans, leapfrogs back out in front, 21-17, the Busby's replay of the touchdown. Yeah, there we go. We didn't get a chance to see it full time. I'm glad we got the highlight for everybody. Yeah, and you're, you're correct there, A.B., they're scoring drives for Evans. One started at the, the one touchdown started at the Greenbrier 37, uh, the other at the Evans 44, and then uh, the latest at the Greenbrier 16. Wow. I mean, that's, can't beat that. Yep. Took a whole minute and 11 seconds off the clock, did that uh, Evans drive. And with that, we'll get your QBs by the quarter for quarter number three, Nathan. Yeah, Swint uh, was uh, four of eight. Um, did have a, did have a touchdown, had a second touchdown there right as we started the fourth quarter. Um, and then uh, Stevens on the Greenbrier side is four of nine for 68 yards and a touchdown and did just throw the interception there late in the third quarter. And our QBs by the quarter brought to you by Culpepper Lumber Ace Hardware. So back and forth we go. Really kind of has the feel of the whoever has the ball last kind of a thing. Yep, we said final possession or two for sure. And who blinked in Greenbrier with the interception that set Evans up at the 16-yard line. You see on the far sideline, Greenbrier made the six-mile trip down Washington Road in big numbers as well. And Tyler with another touchback, Tyler Wallace. Sean Tiernan said when he took this job, he really wanted the the Greenbrier that, you know, the, 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 have reported, uh, supported baseball and, and, and volleyball and, and, and all these other sports that have been so good throughout the years. He really wants to build a culture at Greenbrier like they have at Burke County, like they had at Thompson. And you see that crowd on the far side. looks like it's working out. Well, two things. It's night and day. The, the excitement about the team, they, they've had year, the years of just, you know, one in 19 over two years is rough. It's tough. And Nathan pointed out something that's a real key. The excitement he's built. If you look at the sidelines, not the fans, the players, the number of players playing football at Greenbrier is up exponentially. And absolutely nothing doing on first down for the Wolfpack and a whole host of Knights in on the stop. Yeah, they marked him down right at the line of scrimmage. So it'll be second and 10. This is a big possession. You're down, you need a touchdown. A field goal don't help you. And you certainly can't get down two scores the way this game's going. So they need to drive here. Stevens is in there. Polcha is the running back. So no cold Trump on this series. Let's see what they can do here. Second and ten. But a really big possession for the Greenbrier offense. And they have been known to have long balls con uh, s control, long sustained drives. And it will be six yards on second down. Yeah, that's a good run by Polch. It sets up third and about four. Yeah, they did spot it at the 25, so it'll be third and five after the five-yard pickup. Claiborne is not on the field. Claiborne are Trump, so this is a huge, huge series, and the best two playmakers not out there right now. Steven's trying to Tiernan's get the confident. first down the, the easy way. Yeah, he's confident in, you know, Stevens and, and obviously Polcha. They are going to throw Davis. it. Looks deep. And threw into double yeah. coverage. Yeah, it's going to be Bryce pass interference. Want a flag? They got a flag. Yeah. Yeah, that was a pass interference. That, and really, it, it, they didn't have to. It was great coverage, and the ball was probably not going to be caught. But they hit the receiver, and it's going to be pass interference. Vaden Guyton. On the defense. Actually, it's holding. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. The first down. So holding, so it's a first down. Vaden Guyton was the receiver they were trying to get it to. So the penalty gives them the first down, keeps the drive alive. The Guyton name, no, very familiar to Greenbrier fans over yeah. the years, the last five or six years. Yeah, Vernon Guyton was a top receiver the last few years. So, fresh set of downs for the pack from the 35, and it's Polcha again. Yeah, he'll pick up about two. Second and eight from the 37. 
Greenbrier getting the play in quick here. Yeah, a little pep in their step here. They're going to run a little quarterback sweep. Yeah, it's Trupp who entered oh, the game. Oh, great play. And what a nice play. Of Jibraylan Kennedy, a junior linebacker. What a play. And if he doesn't make that tackle, Trupp had a lot of green grass in front of him. Watch the play here by number 10. He beats off the, the block. And, boy, Polcha, yeah, Polcha there missed the block. And because of that, his quarterback stopped. So another big third down play on this drive for, for the Wolfpack. Evans' defense stepping it up here. And again, no, no spread. You don't have, I don't think Claiborne's out there, and I know, and neither is Trupp, and I think Greenbrier moved. Sure did. So that'll go from third and seven to third and 12. Third. Yeah, it's funny how in the first half, Greenbrier always seemed like they were a little bit better, but Evans has taken the momentum, and they've looked like the better team at times here in the second half. So Greenbrier now backs up. It's third and 12. They will bring in a different alignment offensively, Claiborne and company, some receivers in. Wind again is the 45. And Stevens will heave it. And he's got him. What a catch. It is a first down. Stop me if you've heard this one. Ryan Claiborne. What a catch by Ryan Claiborne. You know, forget, obviously, he was behind the guy, and if he had caught it on the run, it's a touchdown. What a job securing that pass. What a catch. 28 yards. Huge play. Huge, huge play. I mean, that's one of those when you go back, if Greenbrier is able to pull this out, that you're going to look back and say that third down, third and 12 pass and that catch may be the play of the game. Into Evans' territory at the 39. Here's Trupp. Trupp on the keeper, or the direct snap to the 36-yard line. Yeah, I can't say enough about that. It's so hard. You're running full speed, and you've got to turn your body around, almost spin, really, to, and then make the catch with your, you know, you know you're going to go down on your back, almost like a nasty punch, you know, catching the ball. What a play by. Uh, and really, Claiborne has really been impressive tonight. It's the first time I've heard Nesty mentioned in a long time as well. <laughs> that Kool-Aid plunge, I can, you know, whatever. <laughs> Second and eight from the 37. Yeah, I did date myself on that one. Trupp, one way, then the other, nothing doing either way. All you youngsters, the guy just falls down backwards. That's all. <laughs> Into the water. That's all usually. you need to know. Yeah. <laughs> Google it. It's on YouTube, yeah, I yeah, promise. Yeah. Well, there we go. There's a look at that. Watch this catch. Again, just unbelievable to make that, to hang on to that thing. Well, good, good play. At the end of the game, we will name our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game. And Claiborne making a strong statement if Greenbrier oh, yeah. can pull this one out. For sure. But down four. Yeah, they got to get in there. To play. Evans leads. Trupp again he's gonna inside be short. the 35. Yeah, he's going to be short by about three. Third and a short four, long three, depending on how you want to look at it. It's, yeah, fourth down. It's fourth. That fourth, I meant. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what they're going to do here. They're going to go for it, I think. So you could take a chance and punt and pin them back, but they're going to go ahead and go for it here. And they're in a run alignment. So a lot of confidence. And Sean Tiernan standing next to the official at the top of your screen and yeah. will call timeout at the end of the play clock. Yeah, I just wanted to see what Evans was yeah. set up in defensively. First timeout for Greenbrier. And we'll take one with him. 631 left to play, 21-17 Evans. John Tiernan will leave his offense on the field on fourth and four, and we will have to take wait a little bit longer to see what Greenbrier will do because now Evans will take a timeout, which will give us a chance to answer our 
game night live trivia question. If you weren't with us in the third quarter, these are the two of the most successful baseball programs in the state of Georgia, Evans and Greenbrier. How many combined state championships in baseball between Evans and Greenbrier? A.B., the floor is yours. I am going to go 11. Five for Evans, six for Greenbrier. And, by the way, Terry Holder was the coach for eight out of the 11. Between the two schools. Between the yeah, two schools. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's see the answer. I went, very, I went very easy on you tonight. I, I, I do. That was easy. I appreciate that. Yeah, and question for you, A.B. All right. Out of all those 11, which which of those teams do you think was the best team? I said, mm. I'm going to make my buddy Todd Green angry because he fusses that it's the 89 team that went 29-0, and 0, by the way, 1989, the last unbeaten Georgia high school baseball team to win the state title. Um, uh, unbeaten team, period. But I'm going 06 Greenbrier. You had Rich Poitras that went to Georgia, Jeff Rowland that went to Georgia Tech, Brandon Compton that went to Georgia Tech, Fudd, who had 13 homers and 45 RBIs, Chris Johnson. And the best player on that team was probably Nolan Beltry. He went 15-0 on the mound. He struck out 156 in 91 innings, and he also hit 380. An unbelievable team. Fourth and four for the Wolfpack. Stevens. Oh, man. And he's going to hand it to Elijah Harris, who was met in the backfield and dropped. Jabralyn Kennedy, as they, well as Tariko Harper on the stop. They had, they were trying to use Claiborne again as a decoy, but this time Evans was ready for it. Great play by the Evans defense. A yeah. loss of three. Great play. Yeah. That was great defense. Way to stay at home there. Tariko Harper and uh, Jabralyn Kennedy, both great plays by the Evans defense. Because, again, they used Claiborne out on the right, and they came back with a little reverse to the left, and they thought everybody would focus on Claiborne. But two Evans Knights stayed at home and made that play. Now, based on how this game has gone, you're Barrett Davis. You trying to score or are you trying to run more clock? Which is more important to you right I'm, now? I'm running the football. I'm running the football. And if I score, great. But I'm running the football with, with uh, that man right there, Jeremy Howard. Yeah, Howard stopped on first down, no gain. You know, if you get put in a third down and, you know, five or more, then you maybe have to throw. But I'm running the football. I don't care. If, I don't even care if they know what I'm doing. I'm going to run the ball. If we get first downs, great. If I have to throw on third and long, I will. And that's what I, that would be my game plan. Protect the football, run it, and try to run some clock. And then your defense has played really well, um, you know, barring the one other than the one drive. I mean, Greenbrier jumped out early. Since then, the defense for Evans has played pretty well. Aiden Chapel on the stop for Greenbrier, second and ten, under six minutes. This has been exactly what we thought it would be, a chess match between two good coaching staffs and two teams fighting for their lives here as far as the playoffs go. And, Another short gain. Howard. Howard again. Give him two. The third and eight. AB's phone's blowing up. Todd Green maybe on. I <laughs> would not want to be on the receiving oh, he, end oh, of that. Trust me, message. he's fussed at me about that one before. <laughs> Isn't that great, though, a guy who's had an at-bat in the World Series against a Hall of Famer? <laughs> yeah. Still, can, still wants to argue about he does. He who's the best high school baseball team. And he'll even argue it's not the 88 team that I thought was better than 89 at Evans. He says, no, we were undefeated. <laughs> the 88 team was 29-1 and one, but featured, you know, a, a ton of good players that graduated. But, you know, Todd was a senior in 89, and he had a, he hit 17 home runs in 29 games that year. Yeah. Unbelievable well, year. You, Fourth and three with 4.35 to go from right, the 43-yard line. Got to be trying to draw them Yeah, off they're going right? to try to draw them. If they don't, they've got to punt it away with Wallace. He can pin them back as well. I would be shocked if they go for it here. Claiborne. Play clock at 15. Claiborne yelling at everybody, stay put. I can't imagine they're going to run a play. Play clock at 10. And, and with seven seconds on the or five seconds on the play clock, Barrett Davis steps in and calls the timeout. So we talked about those baseball teams. So definitely a, definitely a connection to WJBF with uh, all three Thornhill brothers winning. Oh, yeah. And Trist, who used to work for WJBF. Yeah, that's uh, right. Married to Mark. So yeah. Mark, Chad, and Tim, all three brothers won state championships. That's right. 
Well, we've talked about the resurgence of this Greenbrier football team. How about the Greenbrier flag football team? Yeah, Winning our champs. area's first state championship at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, taking you back to December 12th of last year. The ladies finished 19 and one. Here they're beating Lithia Springs 14 to six in the title game. And they're back at it already, by the way. They're, they're two and one so far on this young season. Evans also has a good flag football team. They are one and one. In fact, they have a game right here at 9 a.m. tomorrow against Long County. Uh, and these two programs will meet in flag football this Wednesday. And that should be a heck of a showdown. And back live at John Pierce Blanchard Stadium. Now 4-12 to go. And this is a, you know, a real important. Let's see, is Tyler Wallace out there? Are they going to actually try to go for it? Let's see what they do here. Yeah, they're lining up as if they're going to go for it. Now they're trying to draw them again. Oh boy, this there's any thing, way there's, you can go for it. They're going they for it. Wow. wow. And got it. He got it. it. Wow. What, what a, a gutsy guts. call. I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> and they had him stopped. And he's able to push his way through Howard. Barrett Davis with the gutsy call. Oh, Jeremy my Howard word. with the – Maybe gutsier run. What makes it so tough if you're a defender for Greenbrier, you're trying like crazy not to jump off sides, and then you're almost shocked that they run it. And they still had it played well, but uh, they get the first down. Man, what a gutsy call by the coaching staff at Evans. He needed three. He got five. First and ten Evans from their own 48-yard line. Look how fired up that sideline is. Yeah, you saw who they went behind right there yeah. on that big play as well. Yeah, Mason Short. And, you know, now they can run some clock. Greenbrier has three timeouts, but they can force them to use them. And now Greenbrier's defense is going to have to get a stop. It's been the weak spot of this team for several years. They're much better this, uh, this year. Or, no, it's been a strong seat, excuse me. Um, they haven't been able to score. And the defense has been safe. You know, anytime they've been in games, it's because of the defense over the last couple of years. So they could uh, step up here tonight and try to give that offense another chance with the football. Well, this would make it a little more difficult to figure out our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game. I think yeah. I have a good idea on defense. Yeah, it's, there, there's two that stand out on defense for me. If Evans is able to hang on here. Yeah, actually, there's three because you got Buddy Rowe Guerrero also had the interception, but which is why I said it's yeah, difficult. Yeah, there's some, there's, there, there's tough. This is going to be a tough one. Usually, by this time in the game, we've got a pretty good idea. And, and I think Greenbrier, we kind of have an idea, but Evans is going to be tough. And look at this, the Second Knights and seven, and the Knights just continue to salt away yards and time. And Greenbrier will take a timeout with 2:29. Well, it's third and two, and this is where they're probably in four-down territory anyway. So if you're Greenbrier, it's tough because you want to try and rip the football away, but you can't give up the two yards. So, man, there this is, is Mason Short, the most inappropriately named guy in the world. Yeah. Ain't nothing short about yeah. him. Mountain. Headed to the University of Georgia. Will graduate early, as if you weren't with us earlier in the game. Yeah, we'll join the Bulldogs in January. I think. Best case scenario for Greenbrier is them going, I mean, going for it on fourth down and not getting it. Yeah, I, mean, I, I agree. You just don't want to be pinned deep. I agree. They're not, a, even though they did have the 55 yard touchdown earlier, they're not really a quick strike offense. And they're going to have to manage the clock better than they did right yeah. there at the end of the first half, even though that may have been planned. Yeah, it seemed like it was. But this drive, yeah. excuse me, AB. No, I'm just saying this is, uh, you, first off, you can't let them get two yards. I mean, the bottom line, you got to get a stop here. This drive has already eaten up almost four minutes. Yeah. Now, Evans needs to win out to make the playoffs. Greenbrier technically could lose tonight, and with a win next week over Glenn Academy, could, if Glenn ends up losing tonight and they are behind, they could still make the playoffs. On third and two. And he doesn't need – Oh, that's Any huge. more than that. Wow. Needed two and picked up 18. I'm incorrect there. I said they could lose. If they lose to Evans, they would lose the tie break. They need Glenn Academy to also beat Evans at the end of the year, and they could make the play. This is, man, it's, it's going to be tight. <laughs> it's, so both, uh, both these teams, if Evans wins tonight, holds on, both these teams are still alive for the postseason. They could be the 3-4 seed. 
But right now, the bottom line is Evans is getting it done. Gutsy call on fourth down, and then they pick up another first down. Greenbrier has got to hope for almost a turnover now. Yeah, they definitely be battling out for that four seed. Effingham, yeah. Effingham's already uh, taken out both. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah, 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 that's right. Effingham's in. So, so it would be, it could come down to if Greenbrier is able to beat Glenn Academy, it would come down to Evans yeah. and Glenn the yeah. following can week. Can either one of them yeah. beat Glenn? It's just between them and Glenn for yeah. the last spot. Wow, crazy. And technically, they we're we're seeing a score, and if it's true, wow. <laughs> Craig Johnson, the injured player for Greenbrier, by the way. Care to share with the class? Well, I mean. The, the scoreboard says 89 nothing Thompson. Wow. 89 to 0 Thompson over Josie right now is what the scoreboard says. So that's a running clock. And keep in mind, Josie has beaten Glen Hills. And so there's not like they're the, you know, worst sure. team you know, out there. But 89 to nothing. I mean, and maybe it's a misprint. Yeah, I don't know. So. But it was, it was a big score early, too. So let's see. Evans. Trying to salt this thing away. Greenbrier can only stop the clock one more time. Yeah. And like I said, they almost need a turnover because Evans is to the point where they can almost take a knee now. Mm -hmm. What a – what a this would be a huge win. I think most people felt Greenbrier slightly better. But, man, 11 straight wins over Greenbrier if they're able to hold on. That was Braden Johnson on the carry. Yeah, the clock running. There's not a whole lot Greenbrier can really oh. do. If they get if the clock, play clock is down to 20, I mean, if they call timeout after third down, they can – Greenbrier, or sorry, Evans would likely kick the field kick goal. Kick the field goal, 24 And then 17, you get the ball back yeah. with, what, mm -hmm. nine, ten seconds left. Yeah. My math may be a little off Well, there, and you come after the field goal is what you do. I don't know if I even attempt the field goal. Yeah. Oh, well, well it's not, not going to matter. Not going to have to. Jeremy Howard in again. Evans. Now Jeremy Howard saying, what do you mean you don't know who the players of the game are? <laughs> the Knights are going to win this game in a must-win situation. Evans comes through. I've got him for 100 on the nose. 17 attempts. What a game. Well, guys, we got to make a decision here. Offensive and defensive players of the game. Well, Howard's second touchdown of the game. Nathan said right at 100 yards. Well, you could make the, uh, the argument on defense for Tariqa Harper. You could make it for Buddy Roguerrera. You could make it. I tell you, the Kennedy kid made two monstrous plays. He didn't make as many plays, maybe, but he made two huge defensive plays. I'm torn me, on me. this one. The interception me. set him up for a big score. I mean, the kicker's sitting there as well, too. I say, I kept, I kept this in this game when the offense was struggling early. Well, yeah, the punter. <laughs> could we? Uh, uh, you know what? Technically speaking. <laughs> Boy, that's tough. And Tyler Wallace with those booming 50-yard punts in the first half, most definitely helped keep Evans. In striking distance, and here they are. I'm not opposed to that. Yeah. But, of course, you had the, the interception. Yeah, the interception was sort of, I mean, I, 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 think the, I think the punting and kicking, I think you could make that argument for sure. I tend to agree. We'll find out on the post-game show, the McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game. We've got the hit of the game and the Powerade play of the game. All that coming your way in 45.2 seconds. Uh, that that Effingham Glen Academy game, 42-36 late in the fourth quarter, Effingham clinging to a lead. If Glenn wins, it uh, certainly hurts these two teams. Well, either way, Evans is going to continue to control its own destiny. Oh, that's true, yeah. It is Greenbrier that will have a much tougher road into the postseason. No doubt, no doubt. As a matter of fact, they've got to get lots of help. I mean, I don't know that they can control it if Glenn wins tonight. If Glenn, if, Glenn Glenn wins tonight. if Glenn wins tonight, Greenbrier's, if Greenbrier's out. 
And that's not to take anything away yeah. from what Greenbrier's done this season. Oh, well, no doubt. What a turnaround it's to been To be even one considered year. a playoff. Correct. You know, again, 1-19 in 19 the last two years. But Evans. What a game. What a win for Evans, man. This is a big, big victory. Game much closer than the final score is going to indicate, but what a game for Evans. That so, gutsy fourth down play, too. So we double checked that that Thompson score. It wasn't eighty nine, but it was an eighty three nothing. Oh well, that's yeah. that's completely different. <laughs> Next week, Greenbrier will be at Glen Academy. It remains to be seen if that's going to that could be a, a hugely important game or mm -hmm. just you know playing out the string. We don't know yet. Uh, Evans will play Bradwell Institute. Will again be a much a must win game for the Wolfpack or the, the Knights. And Lakeside's finished off their blowout tonight, so they're pulling hard for Effingham to go ahead and lock yeah. up that home home field. And by the way, we still don't know where we're going to be a week from tonight. <laughs> we're, we're looking at two or three games. We're in our part of our season where we call the flex weeks, and we pick week by week whatever the biggest matchup is and try to go there. And they're, you know, there there are two or three we're eyeing, but uh, we'll have that announcement for you on Monday on WJBF News Channel Six. So the Wolfpack need a bunch and need it in a hurry. Yeah, they need, and a, the clock they need, stops. A, they need a couple of miracles here. With 38.9 left. I mean, not long ago it looked like Greenbrier was kind of in control maybe. And then Evans just, you know, the defense made a play. The interception by Guerrero, man, that interception is big it, now. It really did turn it around. It turned it around. <laughs> it's tough. The interception. Anybody get a coin? It set them up with the, the you know, the, at the 16-yard line, they score. And then the defense, you know, makes some stops. And then that gutsy call on fourth down. Wow. I didn't think there was any chance they would run that play. Yeah. But like I said, that, that's why it was so smart, because the defense is trying not to jump off sides, and then all of a sudden they're getting blown mm -hmm. back by Mason Short. So Greenbrier going to – Going to fall to three and five overall, and two and four in the region. Evans improves to two and four, but of course they have the tiebreaker over over Greenbrier now, and Evans will improve to four and four on the season. There's a lot of analytics now. I wonder if analytics would have told you to go for that there. I, 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 I it was a gutsy call. We've seen some good calls. I mean, Greenbrier made a great call on the touchdown pass earlier. And uh, now they're trying to get downfield, but, I, again, just not enough time probably. Even if you score, they're just yeah. not, it's a two-score game. You score, you get the onside kick somehow. Are you even going to have enough time? There's no timeouts also. In 29 seconds with no timeouts. And if you're Evans, you know they've got to go to the sidelines because they, they have no timeouts. Yeah, so yeah. you don't even have to worry much about the center of the field. One person can yeah, you manage got, that. you got to score on this play. Heave it to Claiborne. I See would say happens. crazier things have happened, but not I much. I don't think so. <laughs> not much. And they well, do they go will to the work middle the middle of the field. Now, a little bit of a trying to catch them by surprise. They'll, the clock, did they get the first down? No. So the clock's running. Timeout, Green Bear. So I guess they did have one. They left. had one left. Okay. The scoreboard had it at zero. But they do have one left. And they'll take it here with 14.8 yeah, seconds. Yeah, that's why they yeah. did, didn't mind going to the middle of the field. They, I'm actually okay with – I think you're going to put a few seconds back on the clock here. Uh oh. I'm actually okay with this game taking a little longer because I want to know who won that Effingham game. <laughs> yeah. Football Friday night coming your way, 1135, over on WJBF News Channel 6, 30 minutes of highlights. So Effingham's just kicked the field goal. They're up 45-36 now, less than four minutes in the fourth quarter. For crying out loud. Hurry up, folks. And Evans fans are going to want to catch the encore presentation of Game Night Live coming up Sunday, high noon, on WJBF News Channel 6. Because in 18 seconds, there'll be a winner. Stevens. Wow, what a, nice what a catch. catch. This, is, this is like Kirk Cousins in the final minute of a, of a, of a half. Yeah, Cole Trout with a great catch. Yeah, no quit in 22. No. I got to give him credit. I mean, Evans came in. They've been really struggling. I mean, they got – keep in mind, Greenbrier beat Statesboro 43-14, to 14, and Statesboro beat Evans last week by double digits. 
Yeah, if you do this opponents is, in common. Oh, you know, this is a uh, – you know, the only one really was Effingham County that beat them both. But other than that, you you would lean Greenbrier. But Evans came in here tonight and played some inspired football. What a game from Howard running the ball. And, and that pass is going to be – did he drop it? Yeah, yeah, clock will stop with yeah. 5.5 left. Yeah, you wanted that one to be incomplete or Greenbrier anyway. Although, I mean, it doesn't really matter at this point. But Maybe they're about to tow another car. Well, I drove six up here, so we're good. <laughs> so you're going to see Stevens throw the ball a lot more on this drive. Yeah. He doesn't look bad throwing no. the football in another year in the yeah. system next year. You, you can see him throw the ball a whole lot more. And you got Trupp and Polcha back. Now, I think you lose Claiborne. Yes, correct. But, but you look up and down this Greenbrier roster, a lot of, lot of lot 10s of and 11s, yeah. a lot of underclassmen. Stevens hit as he throws. He was looking for the end zone, and we'll have one more play, and this one will be official. Boy, Evans is going to be pumped. 11 straight wins over Greenbrier. I think Barrett Davis will tell Sean about that one. I, I got a feeling. They're not that, that text might not happen tonight. No. He might find out he's blocked. <laughs> So one more snap, and this is in the books. And Stevens will heave for the end zone. And they give him the interception? Yes. They sure did. How about that? To end it for Evans, Antonio Taylor, Taylor again. who is also in the mix. <laughs> he could have been player of the game, too. I mean, he had two exactly. touchdowns. A little late play. Either way, Evans continues to control its own destiny. They beat Greenbrier for the 11th straight time, 28 to 17. And with the victorious head coach of the Evans Knights, down on the field, Kira Goldstein. Coach, a big win for your team. I know how much this meant to you. How does it feel to get it done tonight? Well, it feels great because, I, mean, uh, I mean, playoffs are on the line every week from here on out, but I'm proud of our guys. We made good halftime adjustments, and um, I'm proud of our coaches. I'm proud of our fans, and I'm proud of our players. They did a great job coming back, taking control of the, of the crowd. So It was a 100-yard night for Norman, and he had that touchdown that sealed the game for you. What made the ground game so effective tonight? Well, we knew we were getting good push up front. We knew we felt that our offensive line could get some movement and stuff. Our backs just needed to be a little bit more patient. We, they were more patient the second half, so we're proud of them. Coach, Ashley Brown will not stop talking about that gutsy call on fourth down. Hindsight's 20-20, but what made you want to go for it on fourth and three and ultimately seal the steal? Well, we knew they had one timeout left, and we felt good about our run game. And we said, and Jeremy Howard, number nine, four, set up. He's been able to get some big runs, and we said, we're going to get this sucker, and we're going to win this game. That's what we told him. All right, Ashley Brown, there's your answer. Thank you so much for the time, Coach. Congrats. Right. Thank you all. Thank you. Guys, we'll send it to you. Kara, thanks. Coach, congrats, A.B. Yet again, you get a shout-out in the well, uh, post-game interview. I, technically, you said gutsy call first. <laughs> we were about to both say it, and you said it, but yeah. But it was, but it was, but it was incredible. It was a great call. I, the, watching the chess match between the two friends and coaches was awesome tonight, for sure. All right, so post-game show is coming up. We have your hit of the game. We have the power a play of the game and the McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game. Coming up next, Evans, a winner, 28-17 over Greenbrier. As we rebuild from Hurricane Helene, News Channel 6 is here for you. Find a detailed list of food and water, medical assistance, and other much-needed resources at wjbf.com slash Helene. We will recover together. Twenty-eight seventeen, Evans defeats Greenbrier. And we'll, before we get you down to the field for our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game, let's get you your QBs by the quarter for quarter number four, Nathan Edwards. Yeah, uh, so Stevens in a losing effort tonight was 10 of 18 for 151 yards and a touchdown, had the two interceptions, uh, and then Swint was 5 of 9 for 53 yards and had two touchdown passes for Evans. And with that, let's take you back down to the field and Kira Goldstein with our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game. Yeah, guys, we're going to start with Jeremy Howard with 100 yards on the night and that last touchdown that sealed the deal. What was working so well for you on offense tonight? My offensive line. They, they blocked for me and I just got the job done. That's all I can ask for. They really showed up for you tonight. What was the mentality going into this game? Just put our foot on their neck the whole game. Don't take it off. 
You knew the importance of this game. You wanted to take your future into your own hands. How pleased are you to get a win tonight? Very pleased. We're going to do it again next Friday. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We got some hardware for you. My friend is going to bring it over, and we're going to move on over to Tyler Wallace. What was working so well on the defensive side of the ball tonight? Um, a lot of the blocking. You know, I'm proud of our guys, proud of our group. We worked really hard this week, and I'm glad I could put my best, outfort, uh, best effort out there because of the team who blocks for me. Your team really stepped up. Coach shouted you out uh, at halftime and at post game. He said that the defense was really the heart of this team. What was the mentality coming into tonight? Um, the mentality was that we wanted to win. You know, win at all costs. Defense had to step up, and we stepped up. Special teams did, uh, did great. I'm very proud of our guys. Proud of my boy Jeremy over here. Did very good on the offensive side. But yeah, we're going to go home and celebrate this one. And let's get right back to work. All right. What do you hope to take away from this game as you move into the postseason? I'm um, just. You know, being with my guys and being a team and just moving forward, you know, one win, we're going to celebrate this and it's right back to work next week. We got to win out and then let's do it. And then it's all the guys from there on out. There you go. All right. Both of you guys, congratulations. A great game. Very well deserved. Some hardware for you. We're going to send it back up to you guys. A huge, huge congrats to the Evans Knights, guys. Back up to you. Kira, thanks. Congratulations to Tyler and Jeremy on huge games tonight. Yeah, Tyler Wallace averaged over 50 yards a punt. Obviously, he was great kicking the ball as well. He knocked in uh, all the, you know, uh, all his extra points, but he also – Every kickoff into the end zone, real key as far as field position. That's why we went with him on the defensive side. Buddy Rowe Guerrero had the big interception. He could have gone with a lot. And then on offense, Jeremy Howard, a touchdown and 100 yards, hard to beat that. I love the call, Tyler Wallace, <laughs> me and the defensive player of the game. Special teams will throw that in there as That's well. That's right. What am I looking at? Nathan's showing me something. It is 45-43 now with two minutes left. FEM County. FEM County <laughs> leads Glenn. Lee Glenn. All right, so we're not quite done handing out the hardware just yet. Let's get you your hit of the game. And this one happened early on. Yeah, Cole Trupp, he grabs uh, the Evans quarterback and slams him to the Whoop. turf. A definite hit of the game early on. All right, that brings us to our Powerade play of the game. Had a couple of options yeah, here. We did. This was a tough one to pick. In fact, we just decided it in the last commercial break. But and hard to argue. The fourth and two, and, and that goes to the coaches as much as anybody, but also the, that left side of the offensive line on that gutsy fourth and two, fourth and three uh, to go for it there. What a call by the Evans coaching staff. And our Powerade play of the game goes to our McDonald's player of the game. Final thoughts on this one, A.B.? Well, I, you know, gutsy you know, effort by Evans. I mean, they came in, like I said, they've been reeling a little bit, been struggling, and they were able to come in here tonight and get stops when they needed them on defense, and they came up with plays when they needed to on offense and, you know, really took control there at the end. And you Evans Knights fans can catch the encore presentation of Game Night Live coming up Sunday at noon on WJBF News Channel 6. And a recap of this one, highlights of all the games from across the area on Football Friday Night coming up at 1135 over on WJBF News Channel 6. And they'll be watching that Effingham County final as well. Uh, next week, we'll be coming to you from somewhere. We don't know where yet. It's we will flex. be there. It's a flex week, but we'll be there, and well, we I'm hope you'll be there George, as well. I'm going to tell George Eskel you're stealing his thunder <laughs> somewhere out there. We will be out there somewhere <laughs> next week at 730 here on MeTV. All right, congratulations to the Evans Knights. Huge win, 28-17. They continue to control, control their own destiny. For Kira on the sidelines, Nathan and A.B. up here in the booth, and our wonderful, wonderful Game Night Live crew, John Hart saying so long from Blanchard State.